in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Just, just receive, we'll be seated shortly. I told you that many days are amazing days in the spirit. Sing unto the Lord, make melodies in your spirit. The Bible says not be drunk with wine wherein is excess. He says, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Father, tonight we have come and in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare that your word is prevailing over our lives. Your word is causing us to become manifestations of what it has spoken about. You have spoken great things concerning us. Spirit of the living God, this is Koinonia. We grant you unrestrained access to change, to heal, to deliver, to lift, to bless, to restore. Let Jesus be glorified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. I want you to be very sensitive tonight. Don't be distracted. The remaining days that we have are times that will require acute sensitivity. Be sensitive. Be sensitive to the things that the Holy Ghost is doing. Changing lives. It's changing lives. That a challenge of 10 years can just shrink within a minute in his presence. That's what this is all about, my brothers and sisters. This is not, we are not acting movies. God is changing lives. You see, if you are not anointed, you are not a blessing. You truly are not. It's, it, has, it has nothing to do, listen, listen. It has nothing to do with a name or a big man. It is the only way you can bless people. Are we together now? Yes. These precious people that you see God visiting, only God can tell what challenges they left from their homes and they came to sit people have traveled you heard of the gentleman 22 
hours on the road only to come and sit down? Is there no band in Lagos? Is there no Bible in Lagos? It will be not only unfair, in fact, it will be sin if that gentleman leaves Lagos and comes down to sit here giving God his time and attention and we talk nonsense and garbages and waste his time and share the grace and just shake him and he returns back frustrated. How then do you know God was here? Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me the right song to sing to me. That's what I can lift up my voice. You took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me the brand new song to sing to me. never happen that we stop being men of God and become entertainers. Pray one minute and say, Lord, keep this fire fresh. Keep this fire fresh. Pray. Keep the fire fresh. It's part of the meeting. Please, Lord, keep the anointing fresh. Keep the grace fresh. Keep the signs and wonders fresh. Let the impact be fresh. Let the revelations be fresh. Are you praying? It's a very serious prayer. Please pray. fresh. Pray. Don't let the devil deceive you. the Lord. Tonight I'll try to be as brief as I can be so that we will pray and trust God for His grace. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10. The God of patterns. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10. I'm teaching tonight on the God of patterns. The Lord asked me to repeat this again. Guiding us to understand certain truths. Paul is speaking and he says, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. Please listen. I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. This is our challenge tonight. Read the remaining part. Please go back to verse 10. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Why? 11. He says, For no other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, 13. 
every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work what sort or what quality it is 14 if any man's work abide that means endure he says which he had built thereupon he shall receive a reward just stop there the reward is not just for those that build the reward is for those whose building whose work abide that when the fire tries it and it stands then you qualify for a reward jesus we love you we are here to hear you we are here to be changed by your word who will not trust your wisdom we give up on the wisdom of this world that turns to naught and we subscribe to the wisdom of the spirit we pray oh god in a mighty way that your word will build our hearts tonight we thank you for all those connecting from around the world let your word bless build edify in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please write this down god is a god of patterns when you're done writing it you're going to say it god is a god of patterns That in God's economy, action is not enough. In fact, it is not even certain steps of action can even be termed disobedience. In God's economy, results are not enough. God is obsessed with methodologies and how things arrive in this kingdom. And this is what I want to teach you. So write it down that God is a God of patterns. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Very popular scripture. And then we'll define what a pattern is. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, wherein is the good way. Notice that the way is in the path. Are, are you getting it now? He's talking about a good way. But you have to find the old paths, then you find the good way. And it says, and you walk therein, and you shall find rest. But a very stubborn generation will reply thus, we will not walk therein. Why? Because we are educated. Why? Because we are civilized. Why? Because we are scientists. Why? Because we live in a very, in a 21st century world. And here is the recommendation. This is what you are looking for, rest. And the author of rest is prescribing for you a pattern that you have to search, stand, see, ask, walk. Stand, you must trust God to see. Then you are going to ask questions somewhere in that journey. And then you must obtain grace to walk. And the Bible says if you do it, you will find rest, not for your neighbor's soul. You will find rest for your soul. A pattern, write it down, please. The Lord asked me to teach this again. A pattern is a modus operandi, a, a prescribed methodology. A pattern is a prescribed, it can even mean an authorized methodology. A pattern refers to the correct way things are done. So when we talk of patterns, we're talking about a modus operandi, a prescribed and an authorized methodology. The correct way things are done. They are called patterns. Write this down again. Patterns are pathways that guarantee predictable outcomes. Patterns are pathways that guarantee predictable outcomes. So we're dealing with the methodology of the spirit, his system of achieving his dimension of results. 
let me let me start tonight by letting us reminding us for some of us that in the dealing listen please in the dealing of god with man you are not at liberty you are not given the privilege of suggesting how god deals with you are you getting what i'm saying now it is when it has to do creativity is not needed when you are dealing with intimacy it is when you begin to manifest dominion execution legislation that's when you need creativity when you are working with god your brain and your intelligence is not supposed to be part of an influencer or a contributor god is the ultimate determinant of the formula that defines your relationship with him this looks very hard because you see we live in a please come gentlemen we live in a liberal society where i cannot obey till i contribute are we together now yes if i say walk this way i have to reach a consensus with you to agree with me first unfortunately you are not dealing with a servant don't forget that god is not only savior when you get to the gospel of the kingdom jesus is king the word king there means owner it means sovereign controller are we together now so in the dealings of god with men you have to understand that there is nothing in your walk with god that adds to him he reduced something about himself and put it in you so that you will enjoy the joy of feeling like you are bringing completeness but what you think you are bringing the worship and everything it was there before you came are you getting what i'm saying now let me tell you the truth god truly truly it is true that god has a need but the need was created by him to give us a chance to feel the satisfaction of relationship the need is not something he discovered in himself and then he found out that man had an argument to solve it no the same way you are playing with a child and the child is obsessed to do something to please you then you limit yourself deliberately to give the child an opportunity to find fulfillment that's what god did and that's what he does in the dealings with men so when he seems to allocate a dimension of his kingdom to men it's not because he does not have an intelligence to still rule earth from heaven are you getting it now he brought men to reveal another dimension of him and then to give them the opportunity to partake experientially in that dominion this is a mindset we must have when approaching god let me tell you everything that disobedience brings between you and god you are the only one that loses let me repeat you are the only one that loses god's concern about men is termed love not lack I have loved you with an everlasting love when God reaches down to man it is not because he cannot do without man he has chosen to limit himself he's a betrother are we together now he has brought himself he has subscribed himself to the similitude of marriage where he now becomes inseparable with his bride and so that responsibility of being a faithful husband will always make him to go and seek the bride regardless of the level of halotry and deviation but let us get it very clearly that in the dealings of men you don't sit with god in a round table and say lord you said i should follow this way but me i am telling you this is what i feel like no you are not given the liberty of creativity as far as intimacy is concerned he allows your creativity to function when you now begin to legislate across the strata of human existence that means we are not at liberty to invent a new formula to seeking and knowing god it matters that you know god according to his prescribed formula you can try to route the knowledge of god through many formulas the bible says once have i spoken listen carefully it says twice have we heard that all power belongs to god that means i can sit under someone and then he will teach me about the constellation teach me about stargazing. after all it's still god's creation you see that yes but god will not be glorified because it is not his authorized mechanism for knowing him you will sit down with someone who is practicing yoga or zodiac or scientology 
and you will find a lot of similitudes in his teachings that reflect what the Holy Spirit is teaching you. Sometimes even word for word. But just because you agreed on a point does not mean the road you are following is the same. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. Otherwise, there is no need to recommend the Bible as the exclusive manual that helps men to know God. Because parts of scripture appears in almost every other religious book. Is that true? Either as a citation, a quotation, and, and so on and so forth. The danger of seeking God through another pattern is that you are going to find many things that he created but not endorsed by his presence and it will destroy you because even Satan was created by God. That means you should be able to listen to him. Demons were not created by, by some big bang thing that happened somewhere. The fallen angels were once in the heavenlies. They operated there. Satan himself, Lucifer, the son of the morning, the custodian of the mysteries of the heavens. That was his office. Just because a librarian offended you and you casted him down, don't you think he still has some information you can tap from? That's exactly what the fallen angels did to the daughters of men. They didn't just come and meet with the daughters of men. They came and supplied an information. And they, remember the agenda right from Genesis chapter 3 is that God is hiding something from you, man. Remember Satan's proposition. Man, come and let me give you enlightenment. God is hiding certain things because of his insecurity. He doesn't want to reveal something to you, but we are already privy to it. In other words, God hates us because he thinks this, this is the devil now and the philosophy he's selling to man. That God is insecure and because we know everything about him, that's why he wants to discourage us. Now you give us time and let's bamboozle you. Get my teaching, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I teach them on these kinds of concepts. And so every time Satan meets a man, the point of contact is always enlightenment. It, the idea that Satan meets men and makes them dull is a fallacy. You are joking. Anybody who truly meets Satan will be enlightened. Are we together? But the problem is the knowledge that you will be given is corrupted knowledge. You are eating of the tree that contains both good and evil. And because it is not God's authorized system of knowing him, you will find out that your grandfather can look at you and you will say, I broke my leg. And he will laugh. He will say, come. He will slap your leg three times, slap this one three times and say, lie down and put a green leaf and you wake up jumping, playing football in the evening. My brother and my sister, that was the power of God at work. It could not have been the devil, but it is still witchcraft. Why is it witchcraft? Because it was not routed by the authorized channel, which is the Christ. Are you getting the thing now? You cannot doubt the result. If the result just happened there, this guy just fixed a cracked bone. You see all these funny magicians around. You go online and you watch these magicians that can bamboozle you. Some of them are not faking it. They have mastered the, the principles of the realm of the spirit that govern the second heavens. And they bamboozle the earth. They turn our minds to nonsense. They can remove their head and put it back and do all kinds of stupid things. And make man wonder what he has believed forever. Yet, in it is still corrupted knowledge. That means if the only basis for our conviction is the results that are produced, we're going to get into witchcraft and we're get, going to get into any kind of thing. Because believers are so desperate for results that we do not care the methodology. Just give me the healing anointing. It doesn't matter how it comes. It doesn't matter what I consult. Just give me the grace to minister to the sick. Just give me access. The worst is even revelation. Because right now you go online you can google faith and just faith that you google will come out from more than 100 different perspectives because almost every religion is communicating it and because of your appetite for vastness you can begin to tap into all kinds of things go online now the word for 2019 bam 
and you are going to see zodiac signs will come up and they will begin to manipulate it and tell you 2019 shall be the year of A and B and C. And one, one man of God somewhere, one rabbi somewhere, one, one monk somewhere can come up with a prophetic word. And as a man of God, if you are not careful, out of pressure, you will consult with those references and smile and look at it. And then look for a modern, a new living translation of what you just read. And come up with it and say, look, I, I sought the Lord thrice. Like Paul. And he didn't say my grace is sufficient. He said, thus said the Lord. So, 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 yeah, is the year of nonsense. And you find out that the people never become what God said. We must be careful as we pursue knowledge and we pursue enlightenment. Knowledge is like a knife. You must be careful how you hold it. You can hold it and injure yourself. Just because it is light does not mean it is of God. Remember God made many lights. God made how many lights? The light that is used by a monk. The light that is used in a Hindu temple. The light that is used everywhere. All power belongs to him. We're talking about patterns. So we are not given the liberty to invent our pathway and our formula for knowing God. In one of the teachings that I did on patterns, if you remember, I showed you instances in the Bible where men tried to suggest and even take initiatives on behalf of God. Is that true? And you will think that God would applaud them for their intelligence. They were punished and punished severely. Uza punished for nothing. Patterns are very, very important. Thank you. Write this down, please. Success is proof that a pattern has been diligently adhered to. Success is proof that a pattern has been diligently adhered to. Failure is also proof that a pattern has been ignored or violated. If it is true that patterns guarantee predictable outcomes, then success is proof that a pattern has been adhered to and failure is proof that a pattern has been violated or ignored or not thoroughly followed. Hallelujah. When you watch a relay the system of a relay is that you run 100 meters and then hand over the button now imagine that the person who started from the first um, the first point he just ran and felt that the remaining will be late they will not be as fast as him and he said get out of the way and it takes the initiative to create a new rule and runs around the field by himself and arrives first will he be awarded why? Not because he did not arrive there. Remember, arrival first is the basis for reward. But because on the way, he violated a pattern, he would have wasted his time. That means there are many people doing very nice things. At the end, you will see that this thing should produce a result. But the result did not come. That means somewhere along that path, a formula was corrupted. So follow me tonight. As God helps us to fine-tune is, is, is a retrospect of our approach to many things. So that we'll find the gray areas and the missing links. Ah, ah. Based on what I know, anointing plus prayer plus A plus this equal to a life of signs and wonders. And I did everything and at the end of it, it didn't happen. It should happen. It means something happened on the way. Are we together now? Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible is full of patterns. I wrote down a few things here. There is a pattern for genuine salvation. We are not left at liberty to guess how to save men. There is a very exact spiritual pattern by which men, God would not desire the whole world saved and then leave a vague pattern. No. That means... You can know assurance of salvation is not based on falling or shaking. It's based on the awareness 
of the integrity that backs the pattern you follow. Are we together now? The Bible is very clear as to how men are saved. There is no record in scripture where a man is given the liberty to inherit new birth in terms of natural descent. It's not done that way. Every individual must be given a chance to make a decision for Jesus personally. You don't receive, you can receive favor corporately, but you don't receive salvation corporately. That is the pattern allocated. That means if I bless you and I say in the name of Jesus Christ, you are hereby born again. I violated a pattern. Even if you fell down while I was speaking, you are going to where? Hell. It's as simple as that. Your falling down will not suddenly invent a new pattern. Because Romans chapter 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, it gives us the formula allocated. That the word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. The word of faith that we preach. That if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. He says, for with the heart, notice how it happens. That means the pathway to salvation is that it must start with the heart, not the mouth. People who come to give their lives to Christ, not necessarily here, but around the world who pinch one another and just laugh around and don't even recite everything. When they are saying amen, that's when they are coming late and they follow the remaining crowd and go. They are not saved though. You see, let me tell you this. Don't allow the simplicity of the gospel or the complication of our modern world today make you try to think that just because a thing is simple. Remember the Bible says that he, he has hidden these things from the wise and he has given it to the foolish. God will always use the weak, the base things to confound the wise. There is a pattern for spiritual growth. Spiritual growth does not just happen. How do I know I am growing spiritually? Someone says, well, I've been in church for a long time. No, sir. Longevity in church is not a necessary requirement for spiritual growth. can be an added advantage, but it's not the basis. There is a pattern for church growth. A church does not just grow. No. It doesn't matter if the man is anointed or intelligent. There is a pattern allocated for church growth. That means if you're a man of God, you're a pastor, you're a leader, and your church is not growing, it may be an uncomfortable truth, a bitter pill to swallow, but you must humble yourself and admit that there is something I am not getting. There is something I am not seeing. Are we together now? There is a pattern. If it's the man of God who is rising up, then he's going to use his strength and draw all men to himself. The pattern is that an I, if I be lifted up. Who is lifted up? Please talk to me, Koinonia. Jesus, not a prophet, not an apostle, not Joshua Selman. So when I make Koinonia about me, and I make ministry about me, I start paying the bills, I start drawing the members, I start healing them by my own strength. And let me tell you, that's a lot of work. So, if Christ is lifted, there is a promise attached to it that he will draw men to himself, not to the man of God. But it so happens that the man of God is the earthly representation of that government of heaven within that circle. So, it will look like the man is a big man. Don't get me wrong. You know that I've taught you honor thoroughly. But when it has to do with church growth, my brothers and my sisters, get out of the way. Christ is the head of the church. The Bible did not say we are co-heads. We are heirs. But there is one head. A human being with two heads, is that a normal human being? Please talk to me. A single body only has a chance to have one head. You can have two hands. Is that true? It's not, it's not, it, there's nothing wrong. You can have all kinds of things, but two heads is not correct. That's what Satan wanted. I used to think Satan wanted to dethrone God. He didn't want to dethrone God. He wanted a parallel government. That means you can serve either God or me. Until today, he still wants it. Notice that when Satan comes to you, he doesn't necessarily want to stop you from doing what you are doing. He just wants to become an equivalent alternative. Hmm. So you can trust God or your uncle. After all, what's the difference? It's still God using two of them. And God said there is a difference. One is flesh and blood. One is the sovereign power of God that can change men. 
So when you tell God thank you to the same degree, you have to turn to tell your uncle thank you. And God says, no, my jealousy will not allow this. Who is the author of that miracle? That it came from God, it only passed through your uncle. And if your uncle ever tries to make himself God, then he will know what it means to stand and battle with the Lord. This is the reason why many, many great men and women of God never rise. They are sincere, they love God. But our obsession for wanting to be the name behind every result is why we don't rise. Why were the scribes angry? It was not the healing. It was that they were not the ones shining by the healing. And Jesus said, nonsense, you are wicked people. You can allow, he healed a woman on Saturday, the Sabbath. And these wicked people came and said, why Jesus, don't heal this woman on the Sabbath. They said, you are wicked, you are cruel people. If your animal falls into the well on the Sabbath, and you know you are going to lose money, will you say the next day, I will pick that animal? Or you will get into that well and pick it. It's a human being, not of more worth. Jesus was, they were not angry at the miracles. They were angry at the fact that they were not the face behind it. Be careful with the obsession to be the face behind things. God will place you there, but he will only place you when he's in your heart. So that men look at you, but strangely they see his face. The more they look at you, they remember him, not you. Thank God for the miracles in Koinonia. Thank God for the signs and wonders. But the more you look at Koinonia, the more you look at Joshua Selman, at the end of your speech, you say, God, you are mighty. If your statement ends by, Kai, apostle, you are a great man, then something is wrong. It means I need a retreat. Is God already helping us? Church growth. There is a pattern for wealth and abundance. This is probably one of the areas where people have abused and invented all kinds of devilish patterns. There is a spiritual pattern allocated for wealth and abundance. You can be rich through another pattern and sit back and enjoy the side effect that neglecting God in your success equation brings. Listen, let me tell you something. You see, when you look at the arrogance of those who are alienated from the life of God, because physically speaking, you see the luxuries around their lives, the cars, the houses, the opportunities, the access, security, etc. You will be tempted to think that the reason why you need God is because you don't have money. And so you ride with God until you have enough resources to not need him. And quite honestly, there are many things on earth that can happen with money. Finance is a force. In fact, mammon is a god authorized as a master that can be served. When you have money, there are many things that you will not need to pray about. I agree. But there is a spiritual pattern. You see, the formula, I'm just running through a few patterns with you so that you understand. Wealth and abundance, this is how it works. Satan says, bow to me and I will give you the gold. Or, remain poor and broke and serve your Jesus. And yet God comes to say, no, don't mind Satan. There is a way that you can bow to me and your heart remains with me and you will still possess that gold. And Satan says, you try it in this kingdom and see what happens. So now when you come and say, I will not bow to Babylon. I will not bow to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Yet, I will be able to access the resources of heaven. Let me tell you what will happen. All hell will break loose over you. Because Satan will say, you are trying to align with the patterns of heaven. That a man can have gold in his hands and God in his heart. It's not allowed in the dealing of Satan. No. The gold should be both in your heart and in your hand. So is it possible to be wealthy and yet be madly in love with God? And people tell you, forget that thing. There's nothing like that. Is that true? There is a spiritual pattern for building your faith. Do you know there are many believers, their faith has been in nursery one for more than 15 years. It has not even moved to primary one, not to talk of secondary school. When will their faith write Waek, write Jab, and get to the university for heaven's sake. Let me tell you, faith is like a little boy. 
if a child does not grow, something is wrong. This is the victory that overcomes even our faith. That means if your faith is not growing, the devil is going to crush your life at some point in this world. What is faith? Conviction. Simple. Conviction. And the action that you take based on that conviction. Conviction should grow. That means as you rise and grow in the things of God. Listen, let me tell you, you can't be born again for five years and still be asking some questions about God. God, are you really there? It, something is wrong. That means your faith has not been built. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. That a man's faith can be built so that as a new believer, come my dear, this lady just gives her life to Christ Maybe she gave her life to Christ this year and she's crying and said, Lord, there are all kinds of challenges in my life. Where are you? And you too, you are her pastor. You've been born again for 10 years and you are joining her and say, Lord, two of us are crying. Where are you? It, God is going to hold you responsible and say, no, I don't expect that from you. You should have seen my faithfulness and my track record enough to believe me even if you cannot see anything. This person is a young believer. And God, you will be surprised that God will answer her prayer. God will owe her an explanation. And she will see the Lord come to her in a dream. My daughter. The same mistake Zechariah made was the same mistake Mary made. They punished one and God explained to the other. Because Zechariah was a priest. How shall these things be? Zechariah, you are going to interrupt something. The punishment for not discerning is we are going to lock your mouth until John is born. Mary is asking the same question. How shall these things be? And Gabriel takes out time to say, all right, let me tell you how it will happen. The power of the highest will come upon you. God has expectations. When you train somebody, you send a child to school, you are paying 100,000, and after three years, he can't speak well. You are asking him, read A, B, C, D. And he's not getting anything. And you are seeing the PTA letter. The school fees are saying, you, you go out and, and find out what is going on in that school. Either the child is not serious or the teachers are not serious. There's something somewhere. My brothers and my sisters, your faith has to grow. Because this kingdom operates by faith. If your faith does not grow, how do you receive? Faith is like the strength of your hand. Carry this pulpit as a gift. And give one of these little boys. They can't hold it. So God will not waste it. You have to build capacity enough to receive what you are praying for. There are many people praying for what their faith cannot receive. And so God says build your faith so that your answer will come speedily. Lord give me 5,000 members. And God is saying you have not built your faith to stand the persecution that it takes to be a pastor of 5,000 people. 50 people just quarreled and said A and B about you. You are there crying all around. How in the world are you going to deal with 5,000 people? How do you build your faith? By reading newspapers? No, sir. By reading storybooks? No, sir. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That means to saturate your spirit literally with the word of God. It becomes your obsession. For every challenge in life, there is a scripture that wells up. I tell you this thing I said just even me it, it entered me it really touched me are we together you can't have believers everybody claiming spiritual growth and just because you don't have food to eat you go around frowning at heaven Lord where are you that this is happening and God will say I thought I explained to you five years ago I should still do it again are you still questioning my faithfulness but let me tell you the fate of one who has been built. You will see him sit down and say, where is the food? And he says, I've not eaten for two days. They say, so why are you worshipping? He says, no, no, that's a, that's a done deal. We are dealing with serious matters with God. I know that my stomach needs to eat, but will I be honest to go back to God and now say, God, you are not faithful? No, we've left the issue of faithful or no faithful. Your faith has grown. Your conviction about God. A landlord is coming in the next one hour to chase you out. And they just see you with your rechargeable. You are just listening to a song. And they say, are you aware that you are about to be embarrassed? You say, well, I have learned by experience that my life belongs to God. I've done my best. I'm not irresponsible. I would like to watch God take the shame for the first time. And while you sit down there like a fool, your foolishness will yield a result that will make you afraid. 
Do you know why we don't get many outstanding testimonies? I am telling you, many people don't believe God enough to receive those kinds of testimonies. If you ever, if you ever receive an outstanding testimony, you must be willing to be in the midst of the situation that necessitates the hand of God that far. We don't hear outstanding testimonies again. Just scientific doctor testimonies all around. Because people don't have the faith enough to believe God. This is the victory. How is your job going to come? Just by submitting CVs is a joke. You are going to engage this thing till it works. Please hear what I'm saying. I'm teaching you patterns. This is what I do. Ask those who know me. Till today, till tomorrow, I speak over koinonia. I don't sit and say, okay, we are rising and, and nothing grows by itself. You engage it. Prayer department is praying on Tuesday. I'm there sending my own fire. You are there praying and God is raising other people in the name of Jesus. This ministry is rising. The word is prevailing. People are testifying. You have to build your faith. You drop your CV and complain for one year. Believe me, I tell you this in the name of the Lord. No door will open like that. Is God speaking to us now? You have a responsibility to build your faith. God has dealt unto every man a measure of faith. A measure of faith is like giving you a seed. I give you a seed. Go to the farm. Farm there. Water it. Don't see weeds and pretend that that's not weed. Weed it and make sure a harvest grows. You are breathing over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine in darkness. You are brooding over every Listen, you get five reports in one day. Ah, something happened to somebody somewhere. The money that is supposed to come to you, your boss shut down. And you just sit down and just say, well, life, life self can be unfair. That's, that's, that's an unbelieving approach. Every night when I wake up, I'm prophesying, walking, because I know that they build it and prosper through the prophesying of a guy. Let me tell you, there are times I'm playing a message from my phone and another message from my laptop. The goal is not to hear it. The goal is to saturate the atmosphere. Two different messages at the same time. Fire is rising from here. Fire is rising from here. And you are backing it up, blasting in tongues. Sometimes it's worship song and a message. Nobody will build. There are many lazy men of God that want power. Power is not a charm. My brothers and my sisters, you walk this thing. It's the same way you, you do your, you go to the gym. Say, I have a responsibility to build my faith. I can know you have weak faith by the communication that comes out of you. The ease to discouragement is proof that your faith is small. Let me tell you. Please listen. Are we learning tonight? That means if you find out that every fiery dart, remember the instrument that quenches the fiery dart is the shield of faith. The shield of faith must be big and strong enough that when the devil fires the fiery dart, you can shield it. Discouragement. It can be through your biological father through your biological mother it can even be through a man of god you are a useless son you are a useless lady your boss will look at you and say i've never seen a stupid worker like you and the devil records that stupid worker and you keep hearing it and someone whose faith has been built as soon as you get out of his office the bible says that rejected stone will later be the chief cornerstone but this is what many of us do. You sit back there and allow the word to enter and sit in your spirit. And when the word sits in your spirit, because your heart is a soil, it will grow. So what came as stupid boy will grow to become complex. It will grow to become a mindset. It will grow and then demon spirits see a nice tree. 
of hatred growing and they come and pitch over it and you find out that bitterness the small thing that was just an insult from a careless boss has become bitterness you hate the success of every other person because of the pain of allowing a wrong seed grow you can kill seeds the bible told us that if satan can steal the word of god that means you can cast out any seed that is not of god don't allow any seed to just grow in your heart like that some of us hold on some of us have wrong associations and that's where the voice of darkness comes into our life oh i'm trusting god for grace i'm sensing the call of god upon me um, you know for ministry and the friend looks at you and says, you mean god doesn't have people again you mean god has, has has chosen to waste his time on you and you too you sit down you will laugh as if it's just a joke in passing but later you sit down and say kai this thing and reject the call of God upon your life and start hating every man of God because they remind you of something you should be doing that you are not doing the devil is a liar tonight 99% of jealousy comes from this little thing that I'm telling you the personal defeat that was incurred because you didn't have a shield of faith any battle that you lose in the spirit realm when you see people gaining victory in the physical you will fight them you have a responsibility to build your faith i can tell you my brothers and my sisters the reason why it looks like for many of us that certain dimensions of our lives prayers are not being answered is because we don't have capacity enough to receive it i'm telling you this Are we together now? When you read your Bible only once a month, when you read your Bible only during koinonia, when you open to any verse, any day, any time, you just close your eyes, J-E-S-U-S, -S, and you open Ezra chapter 4, you will never build your faith that way. It's amazing the things that believers do. In the name of you give your spiritual life five minutes and you give your social life two hours ten hours you watch a movie from morning till night for ten hours even during work you lock the laptop with the movie go to the office continue watching it and here is something that can bless you thank God for technology there are Bibles on on tape on mp3 different versions there are people who have already gathered worship songs i think there's one of this co collection of koinonia worship songs for close to one hour or thereabout you soak your spirit someone is knocking your door and you already have discerned through the years that that person is a faithless because faithlessness can be imparted someone can come and say hi I just came back from the market. Are you aware? Say, where, where did I get the money to go to the market? <laughs> Sit down. Let me tell you the price of beans now. Let me tell you the price of rice. Are you aware that we are even suffering? This, this world, there is no way out. And the moment they leave you, you sit down, turn to your wife, turn to your children and say, God, why, what, what brought me here? The moment you get to that level of that sober, it's not, it's, it's not piety. It's an attack. The next thing you bring out your ATM and you look how much is here, home and abroad. Everything I have is 100,000. Lord, how are we going to rise? Whoever told you all that is this, all that you have, is because you don't believe. The Bible says we have been given. Listen, listen. Paul was teaching us that we have been given all blessings in spiritual, in heavenly places in Christ. Either you think God is lying and it is a church doctrine to believe on Sunday or you believe it and say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. There is a spiritual pattern that brings the anointing to a man's life. And there is a pattern allocated for growth in the anointing. I'm showing you different outcomes that we desire in our lives. And to let you know that they don't happen by magic. Spiritual pattern for the anointing. There are many of them scattered through the Bible. The mystery of brokenness. Prayer and fasting, corporate fellowship, the prophetic impartation, all of these things are patterns. 
There's a spiritual pattern for activating favor in your life. Favor that we seek so desperately and so dearly operates based on a pattern. How do you know you have activated it? By the result that follows. Simple. If favor is not speaking in your life, it means that there is something about the pattern that brings favor. Please listen, my brothers and my sisters. If it is not working in your life, be patient. Don't be angry with yourself. But just be honest to say this thing is not working somewhere. Building and maintaining relationships. There is a pattern allocated for it. As, as sociological as it looks, it is spiritual in every way. There are many of you, you are alone in life. There is no helper in your life. It means there is a pattern you are violating that is responsible for relationships. Any, I'm not necessarily talking of love relationships, but anybody that comes into your life, the lifespan of their stay is two weeks or three weeks and they get out of your life and they live with the treasures they came with. It means there is something you do not know. Maybe you need to learn the law of honor. Maybe you need to learn how to be friendly. Maybe you need to learn to keep your mouth shut. These are powerful mysteries. Why would somebody walk into my life intending to bless me? Maybe financially or otherwise. And then something I am not doing drives the person. Many of our families, our loved ones today have retired. And for 30 years, 35 years, there is no quality relationship that can translate to a stream of income to bless them. You find out people who worked at, they got to the zenith of their career and now retired. They have to wait for pension to survive because they violated relationships. Yet a houseboy who was cleaning your house. I was ministering in Abuja and one dear lady, a powerful worshiper from Ghana, and the lady came and sang, I was so blessed, so blessed. And the lady shared her testimony. And she said she used to be a cleaner in a house. She would come and sweep and clean. And every time she would sing. And she said, Lord, I may not have had the privilege of a good family, but there has to be something about my life. But she found out that she would do it with joy and gladness. The rest is history. God con connected her one to someone. And your people like that. Today she's one of the leading prophetic worship voices in Ghana. There is a pattern for relationship. The moment your friend comes and the first thing you are looking at is his shoe, his hair, his, his wivon, and all of that. You are already steering competition and jealousy. Are, are we together now? Good morning. Will I greet you? Are you not my, I come. Are you not my, are you not my Gino brother? And you start bringing all these tribalistic things. And the person just says, look. I need to leave this person. He has a personal problem that has nothing to do with me. Are you seeing that now? It is painful. Let me tell you. The departure of a destiny helper is, is, a, is a thing that demands crying. Because God stores his possibility in men. So when men depart from your life, it's the departure of the glory of God. There are certain men when they leave, it's a, it's a miracle. You should celebrate Building and maintaining relationships. There are many of us, your father hates you. And your father is a sound Christian. Just because you answered the call of God early, everybody must kneel down and worship you in the house. Have you seen people like that? Just because you prophesy to your father, he needs to greet you every morning. Your father said, nonsense, you may be a prophet, but I gave birth to you. Oh no. Some persons may want to help you. But when they remember how bad your heart is, that you speak evil of every good done to you, they just say, mm -hmm, to your tent, O ye Israel. Patterns. You walk alone, you cry alone, you pray alone, you complain alone. If something is 100 naira, you must have 100 naira to pay. No friend, no relationship. Something is wrong. A model marriage is based on patterns. Not desire, not luck. Subscribing to that pattern is how the man will never slap the woman. The woman slap the man. Are we together now? Yes. You are allowed to change every other thing in your life except your wife and your husband. 
you must cry for the pattern you change your hair you change a cloth and it's not like the man or the woman is growing younger and yet you are supposed to be happily married that means there has to be a secret that is not scientific let's be honest are we together remember when you bought the shoe you threw away last year when you bought that shoe you were smiling from the boutique six months later you hate the shoe you look at the shoe and you can't imagine that this shoe was actually bought that's the same thing that will happen to your wife the same thing that will happen to your husband the same thing that will happen to your children until you understand the pattern allocated i told you patterns guarantee predictability longevity hmm. longevity is governed by a spiritual pattern it is true now many people may just think that longevity is luck but i've studied the concept of longevity there is a spiritual pattern responsible for it what of restoration and exemption we've taught all these things in this house that means that there is a pattern in the dealings of god with men that when opportunities depart from your life there is hope for a tree hallelujah maybe this is a word from from god to someone in the world system when you lose something that's it it's gone but in this kingdom ezekiel 37 you see that that although you cannot see the bones they know where they are they know themselves and when the right voice speaks the bones will return back and become an army so you can see someone you have concluded about him and said oh dear so this is how this man will end his life nothing good can come out of him nothing good will come out of her they will tap into the patterns that are allocated for restoration you will see them bounce back with honor and glory there are many others but this is just to show you that for every outcome you desire there is a spiritual pattern a pathway a methodology authorized by god to help you get there now listen Hold on, please. In one minute, I'd like you to think of something that you know with all humility is working in your life now. Don't write it, just think it. There has to be something working in your life. If nothing is working in your life, watch out for the prayer at the end of this service because that, that's a real attack. Now, I want you to think of something you know is not working in your life. Be honest, there's nothing, you are not going to hell. It doesn't mean you don't have faith. Some of you, you see how long you are thinking? Because there are plenty. Hi, what is, what is even working? A, B, the only thing that's working, maybe my salvation, maybe this. I'm not talking of just something tangible. That is a revelation that you have not understood a pattern. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. You only succeed in this kingdom when you build according to pattern. You only succeed in this kingdom when you build according to pattern. When I found this in my life, I started writing down some of these things that I shared with you. And I started searching desperately like a madman for the spiritual patterns that are responsible for those results. I want to be better than I am now. I want to be a better version of myself now. And I know that growth is a pattern. So you subscribe to the patterns that bring growth and you will rise. Oh, I came from a poor family. Lord, is this how we are going to be? God says, no, this is not my will. So Lord, what do we do? Ask for the ancient paths wherein is the good way he says and walk therein you will find rest that's a word from god lord what do i do about my finances Ask. lord this issue of job we are 11 graduates in our family there is no worker nobody is working that family does not need just a job that family needs a miracle a thorough understanding of god's systems 
if one person gets a job of 40,000, is the family still free? The workload on that one person will kill the person and recycle the pain back again. As a man of God, you find out nobody is placing a demand on your grace. No invitations. Nobody is blessing you. They finish ministration and they escort you like thieves and just search from their pocket. Bring out one or two thousand and just say, please, let's shake and just say, guy, bros, God bless you. That means there is something you are not getting. Is, it, is that how to reward a servant of God for laboring to preach for two hours, healing the sick? And not? It means you don't have to tell them, I'm not going to collect. This is too small. No, change your pattern and you will see that the results will change. That means there may be something about excellence and administration and all of that that you do not know. Are we together now? Yes. I went for my brother's wedding very briefly before I would pass to Gombe. And I saw several people from my village that I had not seen for a long time. And what do you think I was going to Calm down. I'm the one I'm teaching here. Wonderful people, by the way. And there was this gentleman, the last time I saw him was probably maybe 13, 14 years. And the guy kept following me around. I said, what is, what is, um, you know, I, I said, please, you are embarrassing me. What is, what is the issue? And of course, you, you know that once, the, I, I don't know how they think. You know, he was just following around and frowning. As if I owe him something. And I said, what's the issue? I said, you know, nothing, nothing. And I looked at him, I just said, Kai, this boy. Imagine that it was in my heart to bless him now. That foolishness is already out of pattern, like many of you do. Don't come to a blessed man looking at his pocket. Come to a blessed man thinking of how you can help him. That becomes the key to his heart. I will tell you why many of our rich uncles drive us and we keep dropping their names here and they are not cursed because God is not a fool. I'm going to be an uncle. I'm somebody's uncle somewhere too. So I'm not ready to put my name in one prayer request and say just because you asked for something. <laughs> uncle, good afternoon. Um, happy New Year. Yes, what is it? I, I just want to let you know that there's rent, there's school fees. How much is the school fees? You said 5,000 before just because you say how much. Well, sir, it's not exactly 5,000. The issue is that the way we do it here, when we pay school fees, we transport ourselves here and we need this the pattern of wisdom is not there and the uncle looks at you and already knows you are a thief because you are trying to take advantage of his generosity you kill favor from your life and your family how about fighting landlords you are a tenant you are fighting the landlord look at the, on the servant who was in trouble read your bible when the master was going to, he just knelt down and begged and said, please, there's, there's nothing, just know what you, say, okay, I forgive you. And then he went back to oppress others. But at least he was wise. David knew God. And God said, now I give you an option. Let me deal with you myself or let me give your enemies. Say, enemies, God, let's do it. These people, men don't have mercy. You are the only one who is merciful. So let's, I can beg you somewhere along the line. So those of you who run away from God, you don't know that you are, running, you are running away from safety and mercy. No matter what, don't run from God. Don't run from God. You run to men. Men are killers. They have a track record of killing anything. But it is only God whose mercy, he says his mercies are new every morning. God can say, I will punish you tomorrow. And in the next two hours, you have touched his heart. You don't even, sometimes you just put a worship song and he keeps hearing. The song is dedicated to you while you are sleeping and say, what is this? By morning, you wake up with favor and say, God, I thought you were angry. Say, my anger only endures for a moment. First Corinthians 3 verse 10. What is our challenge as believers? That we be careful how we build. Many of us are building things that are out of pattern. And my brothers and sisters, let me tell you. The world has its way of doing things. 
and if we subscribe to the way of the world to do things you will be in trouble there are many believers that don't give do you know why because they have been they they will not tell you they hate giving or they they, they, they they believe they love giving but it's not yet a revelation they have not seen it as a spiritual pattern to increase and then the only thing they give is tithe and offering and say god that's it you too you saw it i gave you tithe i gave you offering that's already proof that greed is near your door there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty it's true it says but let every man take heed how he build it so that you don't waste your time building according to an invention of yourself and then in the end of it when the fire of god that comes to prove men to see whether their buildings last so that they are rewarded it comes and all your 10 years has been a total waste of time there is nothing there going to church for 10 years but building according to a pattern you want and when god is allocating new graces for people new anointings all right let me see what you have done the fire passes this is solid fresh grace the fire passes fresh prophetic more wealth more membership and they come to you and they see a mountain and fire blows it and what is there is not even up to a stone and god says that again you invented this pattern by yourself. Are we together now? Yes, sir. Is it not in your Bible that when the owner of the talents came to prove the people, the person who he gave something before, it's not only Satan that collects things from people. My brothers and my sisters, the gift of God is without repentance, but the talent he gives you, he collects it, but that talent is money. It's not just talent like ability to sing alone. Mm -mm. God gives you something, you misuse it, you will be shocked to see what will happen. We have this mindset that everything God gives you is once given, always given. It's a lie. Go and read your Bible. See, be careful how you are taught. Just because a thing is a mainstream understanding, you just receive it. The person who is teaching on the anointing and teaching on those things, to what degree are they working in it? He said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled, even of the word of life, that's what we teach. There are things that God gives men, my brothers and my sisters, he watches out for stewardship. And if he finds out that there is no steward, let his bishopric another take. Is it not in your Bible? The bishopric was allocated for him, but he says, let his bishopric another take. So it is possible. There are three things that building according to pattern guarantees. Number one, the manifest glory of God. The glory of God. The stamp, the seal of his presence that guarantees all the possibilities you desire. Exodus chapter 25. Let's read verse 9 or let's read from verse 16. Exodus 40. Let's just jump to 40 for time's sake. Exodus chapter 40. We'll read verse 16, then 33 to 35. Exodus 40 and verse 16. Read with me, Koinonia. One to read. Thus did Moses, uh -huh, according to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. Go to 33. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle of the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. But he didn't just finish the work he wanted to do. He finished the work according to the pattern that was given to him. 34, what happened? Then a cloud. After he finished according to pattern, then a cloud covered the tent of the meeting. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Next verse, 35. 
and Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Why? Because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord rested upon it. The glory of God comes to confirm that you followed patterns correctly. The, the glory of God upon a life, upon a ministry, upon a family, among other things, is a confirmation that spiritual patterns, if I see the glory of God upon your career, if I see the glory of God upon your life, upon your family, upon your ministry, it is proof that a pattern has been kept. Genesis chapter 4. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Read on. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain a tiller of the ground. Verse 3. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Everybody say an offering. So we know he brought an offering. Verse and Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Bible says, And the Lord had respect first unto Abel and then to his. Two of them brought offerings before God. Just that you are offering something before God does not mean he will receive it. The Bible says he had respect, regard for the offering of Cain, of Abel, and left that of Cain. Verse 5. But unto Cain and his offering he had not respect and Cain was very wrought and his countenance fell he was angry verse 6 and the Lord said to Cain why art thou wrought why art thou angry and why is thy countenance fallen verse 7 this is where the message is if thou doest well that means you do well when you do according to pattern there was something Abel did in other words your father mentored both of you and showed you the pathway already. Abel followed according to the pattern and I received it. You violated it and it was not received. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? That means if thou dost not do well, shall thou not be rejected? Notice what I told you earlier on. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at your door. What sin? Jealousy. You see, you see what I was telling you? Every time you don't pay attention to follow results thoroughly, the patterns that produce them, the frustration that comes as a result of your not getting it will make you to search around for Abel. If you are Cain, you will keep looking for Abel everywhere. Even if he's your brother, you will look for him till you kill him. Career people, this is the secret behind the anger that comes when one person out of five people are promoted. So what do you think you are? Every time the sacrifice of Abel is taken and that of Cain is rejected, sin is at the door of Cain. And it's the sin of bitter jealousy and hatred. That means for many jealous people, the issue is not the issue on ground. The issue is you need to go back and say, Lord, what can I do so that my sacrifice will also be accepted? The prophets of Baal and Elijah, same thing happened. The prophets of Baal were doing their thing and fire did not come down. And when it was time, Elijah didn't just say, oh, fire, come down. No, Elijah said, set up the altars, put 12 stones, patterns. When he put everything, he now called on God. You don't call God before you fix it. You make sure that the altar is in place. The sacrifice on it. Then you call down the fire. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted. But if you do not do well, not only will you be rejected, sin. Please get this. This is a powerful message anybody today that you have jealousy or you see the person and something in you you just wish the person will at least fail a little to console you it's not like you are bad it is proof that your patterns have been violated and so you hope that the person's sacrifice will also be rejected so that two of you will become partners in that rejection when your sacrifice continues to be accepted you find out that the love of God grows in you because there is nothing to fight. 
You see that? Yes. But when you sit down and give people a flimsy excuse that God cannot touch you, God cannot lift you because you didn't do A and B and somebody comes in the name of Jesus and raises one song and everything you say God cannot do, God is doing it. The person who gave that proposition will just smile but hatred has begun. Sin lieth at your door every time your patterns are violated. Habalakosia. So the glory proves that the patterns have been kept. Let me tell you this. Please, families, hear me. When you find out especially that all of a sudden the heavens close over you, financially, no help, no favor, please go back carefully and check. If you are honest and sincere, a pattern has been violated. And the, the painful thing about family is because they are connected. One person seen like a can. Other people can also benefit from it. I was counseling a family one time and I remember, and you know, the wife was talking and said, we are tight as we are this. I kept looking at the man. He kept looking at me like Jonah because he, he knew that that statement was relative. My spirit just kept looking at him. I said, no. I looked at him and I said, Mr. Man, I want to be honest with you. God gave you an instruction one time to sow a seed to a man of God. He said, yes, sir. I said, did you do it? They added money in that, in what I told them with the wife to make the money and the man was supposed to take it. He cornered the money. Part of the money from what God showed me, he bought petrol for car and then some needs came and that's how it went. And he came back and lied to his wife that the man of God blessed them. God is not a fool, my brothers and my sisters. You must not do it, Aquila and Priscilla. You must not do it, but if you would do it, do it according to the pattern. Was the land money not your own? Was everything not your own? You have lied against the Holy Ghost. There are people who collect money from their parents. They say they are coming to sow to men of God. On the way, they spend the money and enjoy everything and come and stand and just smile. And snap the man of God blessing them and say, you see, no, you can do this for men, but not in the realm of the spirit. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run. Number two, quickly. Building according to patterns guarantees sustainability of results. It's one thing to have results, but the results must be sustainable. Matthew chapter 7, from verse 24 to 27. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is teaching here. Matthew chapter 7. Therefore, look up please, Koinonia. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built. Everybody say built. Upon a rock. Solid foundation. Next verse. And the rain descended. And the floods came. And the wind blew. And beat upon the house. And it fell not. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. Next verse. And everyone that heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them not. Shall be likened to a foolish man. Where, what is his foolishness? That he built his house upon sand. The foolishness is not in the dexterity of the building, but the fact that all that is a wasted project because the patterns, you don't build on sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. Listen, and great was the fall of it. Was it because the building was wrong? The pattern. That means it is possible to be given every week. You carry envelope. Tight has come up and you are coming but you are not tightening according to pattern. You are like the man building here. For you, tight is just a bribe. And you drag and come frowning and you are eyeing the person who is, is collecting the thing and just looking around and wondering what are they going to do with our money. Oh yeah, let me just drop. You have violated the pattern. The Bible didn't say give to the Lord. It said honor the Lord. 
honor, honor. Recognize that he does not need it. It is a spiritual transaction that brings you increase and opens your heavens. So you approach him, Lord, I am grateful with all my heart. I thank you. If God places a demand upon you, for instance, you know that it is a time for lifting. But many people will sit down and complain and run their mouth and do everything. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver, not a giver, a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver is not a smiling giver. A cheerful giver is one who has a revelation of the harvest and the integrity that backs that harvest. That the only way Satan destroys the harvest of men is to stop them from sowing. But if that seed has touched the soil of the ground and it is left to grow, then God gives increase. No man gives increase. Increase is of God. Stability of results. We all want sustainable results. So you must build according to pattern. There are patterns that God showed me that govern the anointing and govern increase in ministry. And God told me if you keep these patterns, it will be impossible to fail. It's true. I believed him. I still do. And I have kept those patterns. And it's amazing what God does. You need to return back to say, Lord, where am I missing it in these patterns? My results vacillate. My results vacillate. That means something is wrong. Have you tried to on light? And let's assume that one of the wires is touching. You see how the light comes up, then goes up. You are trying to hook the whole thing, let it stay well. But notice that when you tie it and screw it well, you put it on the wall, every time you hit that bulb, the light comes and stays for as long as you command it to stay through obedience. So next time when you come and switch off your light and it doesn't on, or it ons and offs, ons and offs, check the bulb spiritually or go and unscrew everything. And you find out that because you didn't tie it well, children were playing around and they removed that thing. You adjust it like Elijah. Bring back those patterns and fire will fall once again. When you see a man of God that used to be anointed, used to be powerful, used to be great, used to be miraculous, and then all of a sudden church goes down, grace goes down, everything goes down. Yes, I agree, it can be an attack. But the whole excuse cannot just be around the attack. You need to go back and say, Lord, what is it? Was it pride? What, what did I miss? And I'm telling you, men can be laughing at you there, but if you set up that altar again, fire will still fall. Are we together now? Number three. Building according to pattern guarantees peace and confidence. Isaiah 33 verse 6, the A part says that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability, stability of thy times. Peace. Anything that is not built according to pattern, you will keep having fear. Do you know success can bring fear? When what you have gotten was not obtained by the knowledge of the patterns that brought it. You will fear the instruction from God to give it, one. Number two, you will fear the sustainability of it. I have seen many people that money is like a cost to their life because they don't know how it came and they are always afraid. Afraid of who will steal it. Afraid of this and that. Afraid that even God will join the people to steal it. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. There are men of God in ministries like this. That would never allow people that they are raising in the ministry to rise. Because they have not been able to master the pattern that brought the anointing. So they would throw down everybody. Don't rise. Let there be only one person shining and doing well. No. When you understand that there are spiritual patterns. My brothers and my sisters, when you hold the patterns of the spirit, sorry for who is looking for your downfall. He will waste his time till Jesus comes. You are not as powerful as the patterns. It is the patterns that make you look powerful. Mm. Follow these patterns and you will watch the prophecy of those who want to see your downfall continue to be disappointed as you rise higher and higher. They look at you and conclude that, this young man, will he ever rise? But you know the patterns. 
Someone can bow and beat his chest and say, for as long as I'm sitting in this office, you will never rise. And you just look at the person and you know that God is the lifter of men. And you go back and say, Lord, I am not looking onto this job. I, my, I lift up my eyes onto the hills. My help cometh from the Lord. And the Lord said, are you sure? Am I your help? You say, yes. Okay, step back. Let me show you how I help men. And you just hear in two days that they've lifted that man from that branch and sent him to another branch. And you send him a valedictory letter. It's, it's my pleasure to watch you go. Can I help you carry your load? Is there any way I can escort you? And God will use his life as a lesson that no man can be God over another person. Listen, there is nothing that has security in this world except the patterns of God. Did you hear what I said? No bank has security. No police headquarters has security. Nothing is secured enough for you to stake your life upon. The only thing that can be secured enough is the patterns of God. A man can promise that I will help you today and change his mind tomorrow and say something came up and I hate you. Period. Why? I am a man. I will give you a job next week and say I've changed my mind. I won't help you again. You can hold your certificate like this and it will look like a newspaper before life. It's not supposed to be but sadly. You will hold it and travel around. You will travel abroad and say I'm a graduate. They say all that is nonsense. And live as if you never saw the four walls of any institution. But when you hold on to the patterns of God. I never, I never stop, I never stop wondering at these guys that drive these big trucks. All these trucks that is, is container that is at the back. Sometimes you see the truck tilted. You, you, you know what I'm talking about? You know that something is wrong with their shoulder. And you see the people just in and happy because there is a pattern. They know that there is a system of stability there. And that system of stability is not compromised easily. And you, your ignorance creates an imaginary fear because you do not know the system upon which that truck was built. Sometimes they are about to turn within a small place and you are even pitying them. And you see the fantastic, you see, you see the, the mechanics that happen there. And that car just turns within a small space. Patterns. What you do not know will always create fear in you. If I dash you five naira, when it becomes two naira, you will be afraid. But when the keys of the kingdom, the patterns of God, deliver ten naira, even if it's one naira, you smile. Because it's only the money that finishes the patterns don't die. Are we together now? If all you have, my brothers and my sisters, is what men gave you, and you have not held on to the patterns of the kingdom, then there is no guarantee. There is no guarantee. Because every other thing in this life can fail. But my brothers and my sisters, plug your life to God, and plug your life to his patterns, and what stability in the midst of chaos. And quite honestly, sometimes even you will not know how the breakthrough will come. But you trust the God of patterns. His integrity is behind his patterns. Young man, how will you be established in this Nigeria? Apostle, help me ask the federal government. You are joking. No. You are asking the wrong people. Every young man becomes established. Not just through a job. He becomes established based on his activating the patterns and the keys of the kingdom. And so you cry and say, Lord, show me your ways. Let my eyes see. Oh God, wash my eyes with eyesalve. Let me see something that men do not know. Man of God, how will your church grow? My relatives promise me that they are going to bring, they will start attending my church. How many relatives do you have in that city? Go back to the God of patterns. Let God show you something. And you will see that whether you are at the riverside or the mountain, the crowd will still come because there are patterns that bring them. Handle the pattern and bring the anointing. My brothers and my sisters, you will watch your life become a sign and a wonder first to you and to all that know you. 
What any man thinks or doesn't think is not withstanding. They are keys. You hold them and you know I've held them. Hold on to the patterns that bring favor. I can look at you and wave you and say, see you at the top and I mean it. Even if at that point you don't have Gary, I will not give you five naira, but I will beat my chest and tell you where to meet me in the future and I can guarantee you will go there. The patterns. This is what we do business with in this kingdom, my brothers and my sisters. The commodity that makes men great, they are the patterns of the kingdom. The, the authorized channels You see this Bible? I want you to believe what is written there. But it is not reading the Bible haphazardly that will bless you. You will need eyes to see what key connects to which one. The patterns of God. Give us Jeremiah chapter 6. We're rounding up. I pray that as simple as this message is tonight, that it will truly minister to someone. That your fear and your instability sometimes you even fear results when they start working because you are not sure it will be sustained wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability they are stabilizers a small child tries to walk and he's not sure he can walk for long so you see how careful he's walking one two and he wants to reach out to the mother but an adult can run he does not expect his strength to fail because his mind has been educated to know that the, the, the legs can take the weight of the body. That knowledge has brought stability to his life. You don't climb your bed in the night wondering. In spite of the noise it makes. You are sure. You saw what the carpenter did. You were a witness. And so you trust what the nails are doing. The area of fear in my life. In your life. In our lives are proofs that we have not understood the patterns that govern them. Thus saith the Lord. We're rounding up tonight, Koinonia. Stand ye in the ways. Like you stand by the road looking for a car that will take you to a far journey. You come out of your house with a bag ready for a journey. You are going far, but you are standing. Kekenape passes and you say, no, this is not it. Another boss passes. It can even say, should I stop? You say, no. But when you see the car that looks like the one that can take you, you highlight it. You step into that car and trust the driver to take you. Sometimes even after 22 hours, you will still arrive. I trust the patterns that God has put. My first confidence is him. And then the invincibility. By the privilege of God's grace, I have tasted of the invincibility. Look, let me tell you. God's patterns are powerful. You will see things shake left, right and center. But you will stand in the midst of it. This ministry, my brothers and my sisters, I submit to you that this ministry that you are part of was not built by luck. There is a solid spiritual foundation upon which it sits on. And there is no wave, there is no rain, there is no devil that is capable of capsizing that boat. I want you to build your life on something real. I don't want you to build your life on money. That's a wrong pattern. I don't want you to build your life on people. That's a wrong pattern. I don't want you to build your life on what uncle said. Don't build your life on the expectation of one father's inheritance there. No. You can build your life and sit down and rejoice and say, Lord, I know that my life is great. And people will ask you, where is the evidence? And he said, the evidence is God and the integrity that is behind his patterns. But I know whom I have believed. Hmm. But I know whom I have believed. Listen, hold on. Hold on with this. My brothers and my sisters, come. 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 You begin a journey. Come, gentlemen. We all begin a journey in this big stage called life. And everybody starts working based on whatever he thinks is his security. For this gentleman, it may be his eloquence. For this person, 
it may be a charm that they gave him in the village before he left to another person it may be his education but to someone somewhere he says i know whom i have believed my father was nothing my mother was nothing lord i may not have much but i believe in you i believe in your patterns and the green light says go move slowly guys we all begin to walk and the difference begins to show the pride of the uncle keeps this one in one position and is regretting and explaining while the rest keep moving the charm fails this one and he stops somewhere at age 31 never to rise again and another person begins to go his education takes him so far and he makes quite appreciable progress except for the wickedness of his superiors they peg him at a position but the people that do know their god just because you started like the rest does not mean you are like them hear what i'm telling you i am giving you something you will be grateful for something you will not need to change after decades of your life it is painful to trust in something and have to adjust it later because you found out it didn't work why settle for mundane things while you can settle for something that works just because you have one small car or one small house or one small, those things are nonsense that's not where your strength lies men will promise you and say i will be there for you they will be the first to stab you and throw you away tonight is a call god is not only the god of heaven he is the god of patterns and the rain came the rain stopped this one the storm stopped this one the wickedness of men stopped number three but the house that was built on the rock from zaria to the ends of the earth from your village to the corridors of power from your small room to a palace of royalty from a small corner behind that place to a stadium healing the sick and lifting wheelchairs and they say how did you get here the god of patterns i followed a pattern i stood at the threshold of destiny and i said people have failed and god told me to ask and as i kept looking i saw an old path with grasses all over there and the holy spirit told me this is the road the ancient followed and they said although it looks dusty follow it I'm surrounded by many who have crossed that river and you follow the path for a while your life may look strange because the pride and the foolishness of men will not allow them to see the wisdom of god it is only when god opens your eyes to see the road some may trust in horses and they may trust in chariots they trust in connections etc etc and let me tell you one by one by one by one the elements and the forces of life will beat down the arrogance of men the job your uncle would give you sadly as you were graduating he died he's not a bad man he only died but when you lift up your certificate you lift up your gift and you say lord i'm the only one in my family i'm the only one in my family lord i know that you can help me let me share with you a very touching story and then we're done i want to do something i've not done come darling this my dear come yes let me tell you something about this adorable lady and i'm saying it because it's something that come you see this wonderful lady i i i don't know her so much but it was i'm saying this because it's, it's it was one of i think it was last year or year before last during christmas is that so also and i had a very it was one of the most touching periods in my life her dad was paralyzed and her mom one night like this i just had a call and they said the mom just dropped dead and it looked like the life of this lady i love her very much are we together this dear lady was in a position that could not do anything mom was there i'm not trying to embarrass her this this these are things that you, i mean the burial was done and all of that i remember how touching this was and i put myself in the position of this lady no support no nothing in that situation she still had to cater for her younger ones and in spite of everything you know people village people with all their trouble long and short everything was over and when everything was done this dear lady came 
I think it was outside here or somewhere there. I looked at her and I said, my dear, look at me. If you believe the things that I teach you and you believe this truth, you will come out. I tell you, the God of patterns will bring you out. You may see her look small, no advantage, no connection, but my God, have you not seen God lift men? My brothers and my sisters, what does he have to do for you to believe? I have seen God lift men. I have seen God take no bodies. They were stupid enough to say, I have nothing to lose. Let me give my heart to Christ. Because I gave my heart to every foolish person around me and it destroyed my life. And you come and say, Lord, I hand my life I don't have a father I don't have a mother or I have a father who is not like a father I have a mother who is not like a mother Lord like Gideon I'm the least in my family my brothers and my sisters you are not called to know everything you are called to know the patterns when you know the patterns of the kingdom you will start walking like a toddler from one step to another they'll say watch out watch out he's falling until you start running like a plane about to lift and the next thing they see you in the sky given wings by the spirit of god and they say are you not the villager that could not speak english when i knew you as 12 you said that was me jesus died is true but now he's alive and glorified who is god speaking to tonight that everything around your life is governed not by time listen and not by luck you will never build a ministry with time you will never be rich with time it takes your knowledge of the patterns of god you are a worshiper lord what is the pattern for the davidic order of worship ministry there is too much tribalism in africa who must you know and must you know to rise lord bypass this thing give me something that only heaven can give I went to pray I found it I found it my dear brothers are here and they will tell you once upon a time I would spend the night researching on the largest churches in every con continent I was not looking for the size what was the secret and when I found them one by one I began to write and when I looked up I said Lord we're ready let's take this journey and when we started, many people laughed and they just looked and said, Oh dear, you can laugh at a man, but don't be foolish enough to laugh at patterns. Patterns are solid, as solid as the God that backs them. You catch the patterns that bring favor. My brothers and my sisters, I give you a guarantee. You will be in your small room there and the next thing somebody will come others are saving for cars and somebody will come and say kenny take take benga take a house a jimmy take let me lift you and someone sits down and say god told me to lift your family who in your family is looking for a job you say we are all off and say no wonder god sent me to a point that you'll be thinking there is a catch to it because human beings are not given to be this benevolent for nothing but when you walk with the patterns of God, there may be a young minister here just looking and everybody's laughing at you. And even you, you are laughing at yourself saying, Lord, can I rise? The pressure is so much. I can't prophesy. I can't heal the sick. Even the revelation is just like trickles. My brother, listen, don't run around trying to look for invitations. Don't run around trying to look for all this notice. Me thing is a Luciferian spirit. Stay back in the secret place. Walk these patterns. Understand them. And you will rise up like David. You will stand before Goliath. And say, Goliath, I'm not rehearsing. I'm taking off your head. I was shown the formula already. When they stood before Jericho, God said, return. The pattern for victory has not been given. Go back before you disgrace yourself. But when you catch the patterns, you will stand before life. And you will rise. Are you ready to pray? Listen, your life is not at the mercy of situations and circumstances. My brothers and my sisters, I don't care what is happening to you. You are going to pray. Prayer point number one, Lord, a seeing eye. Open my eyes to see the patterns. The patterns. 
that are responsible for the results that I desire is someone please praying tonight Life is not luck. A seeing eye, oh God, a seeing eye, the spirit of revelation, that my eyes will be flooded with light. Show me the keys, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to cry before God. Mention the areas in your life you know that you have not caught the patterns. I like you to be serious. Say, Lord, I have gotten it in this area and I give you thanks. But this one, my finances, my spiritual life, increase i experience breakthroughs here and there but there is no favor in my life help me oh god Mighty God. few more minutes pray where my father did not go oh God where my mother could not cross where no one has crossed in my family I come in the name of Jesus as the barrier breaker oh to the forces that stand before you i come with keys i do not come alone i come in the name of the lord god the captain of heaven therefore i challenge every door every demonic pattern every strange occurrence in my life and destiny lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus 
the pattern that kept my father down, kept my mother down, I come with the rod of a higher priesthood. I will rise, I will prosper. I may be from Plateau State, from Kaduna State, from Lagos, from Kogi. I break the territorial barriers, I break the social cultural barriers. I break every sentiment of tribe and culture and race and gender in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray, I break it in the name of Jesus. I arise, I shine. I arise, I shine in ministry. I arise, I shine in business. I arise, I shine in family, in career. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray one final prayer. Somewhere along that prayer, find a place and lay hands on your head. I am the desire of nations. I am Pula and Hepzibah. No territory rejects me. No territory rejects my grace. In the name of Jesus, pray. Shabakato Sakata. You shall be Pula and Hepzibah. In the name of Jesus, no tribal sentiment will victimize me. No religious sentiment will victimize me in the name of Jesus. The honor of Aaron is upon my head in the name of Jesus Christ. The favor of Esther is upon my head. The favor of Daniel is upon my head. The favor of Joseph is upon my head. No enchantment, no divination, no yoke, no spell, no stargazing, no activity of the constellation will affect the glory of God upon my head. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer for us and then we'll round up. Listen. When Jesus was born, a star arose right at the top of where he was and that star became a compass and brought his destiny helpers to him. I'd like you to prophesy and say, Lord, let my glory be lifted. Enough for those who can bless that grace to locate me. Lift your voice and pray. Let the kings come, oh God. Let the Magi come, for the King is born. The King is born. Let the Magi begin to come from the east. May they come, oh God, with gifts of gold, with gifts of frankincense, with gifts of myrrh. In the name of Jesus, let the woman bring her alabaster box. Every blessing, every lifting. Nina Kawo Yabo Sir King Salama Nina Kawo Kodia Kane Sir King Salama Kane Sir King Salama
Salama Salama Sir King Salama The Prince of Peace Bringing you peace That God shall give you peace By all means By all means Sir King Salama So when God speaks, listen, the dynamics of the working of his word is that mediating between God, the communicator of that dimension, and man who is the final recipient, there must be men. And this is where the problem usually is. The problem is not with the power of God. The problem is not with the wisdom of God. The problem is the limitation of the vessels that he has to make do with. Are we together now? Yes. So the greater the death, the more the life, the power in experience of the reality of the Christ. Here's what the Bible says. Now unto him who is able to do, listen, exceeding, abundantly, far above all we ask or think. Then it says, according to the power, not that works in him, that works in us. He is able to do. There's no problem with his ability. But that ability, the manifestation is limited by the power that works in us. The dam can supply water. The borehole can supply water. But what enters your bucket finally is the size of the opening from the nozzle of the tap. If the tap is open so small, it can make the dam look limited. And you can be receiving drops of water and you will have to make do with what is coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so God wants to cap this revelation of this mystery of fruitfulness in our lives. God wants to wrought mighty deliverance. What is deliverance? A separation from the obstacle, the impedance that stands before you, around you. The obstacles don't have to be spirits. They can be situations. Hallelujah. If you are given a death sentence in terms of a medical report, that report is looking for the power of God. Remember, we have taught here that the real activator of the possibilities of God is his divine power. His divine power flows through the channel of faith. But the final mystery that works the wonders is his divine power. The Bible says, according as his divine power that hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. Tonight gathered here are several people with conditions that only God knows and only God can tell. But one thing I can tell you is that the King of Glory is in this place. And not only the King of Glory is in this place, the vessels that he has so engraced are also in this place. It is not a popular revelation in the church. Every time people say God is here, they are right. But the presence of the vessels that will be used by that God is often trivialized. Men are very powerful and they are very important. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, burdens will fall. Tonight, yokes will be destroyed. Tonight, God will turn the lives of people around. You hear me? There are things that have no business happening in your life that will be made to happen. Creation did not stop on the seventh day. God only rested. 
please understand this creation did not stop there is nowhere in the bible that god stopped creating Mm -mm. creation god only took a break but creation continues not just plants and animals to create means to make material to create a scenario out of nothing you have no business getting a job before the year runs but the world can create you have no business coming out of pain you have no business but the world the rima world revealed but by the power of god you have no business being healed today but the bible says to appoint unto them that morning in zion to appoint means to set the date when it happens not only to reveal that it will happen to make it happen hallelujah praise the lord please hear me shake away unbelief from your mind as we begin to pray don't let the, the devil will use the flesh this is not the first time you are attending a miracle service he will tell you this is not the first time men of god are praying for you the moment those things come you have the responsibility of fortifying your mind your refuse reject it you can insist by faith that tonight is my night you can insist by faith father the grace that has not come upon my life before tonight is the night it will come lord the dimension that have not been opened to yet this is the night i will receive hear me hear me there are no special days for anybody it is your faith that makes it special the bible said today if you hear his voice any day can be that today Are we together? Blind Bartimaeus is at the way towards Jericho. And Jesus will be passing for the last time. And the guy would have said one day he will come back again. And he would have missed it. The Bible says he cried. He cried, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus looks at him and with what you would think is sarcasm. He said, what should I do for you? And then he says to regain my sight. And that man regained his sight. Only people who insist with understanding receive anything. Hoping and wishing that God will touch me is a waste of time. We'll share the grace and you'll go back frustrated. But there are people who have come. Some of you have been fasting. Some of you traveled from outside of this nation with in this nation with hunger there are people standing outside people following online why will you allow the service finish and you just go back like that you are a man of god you have come from far why don't you carry something of substance that you can go back with as a witness that you met with the power of god is god speaking to us one scripture and then we'll pray Isaiah 61 This is a scripture That is very powerful The hand of God is moving in overflow one I continue to see this thing Overflow one I'm seeing It's an impartation It's not just a deliverance There is a pouring of graces That is coming on specific people The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had ordained the word anointed there is ordained ordained me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives the opening of prison to them that are bound verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn all not some three to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion giving them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness it says that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified go to verse 4 and they shall build the old wastes they shall raise up the former desolations 
They shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the limitless dimension of what the Spirit of God can do upon it. How shall these things be, Mary said, seeing that I know not a man. He says, the power of the highest shall overshadow, not come upon, overshadow. You are under the influence of the Spirit of God. And under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that cannot happen. Please listen to me. Under the influence of the Spirit, time can be compressed. Under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there are things that should not happen but can happen now the Lord is that spirit the Bible says this Lord we have been talking about is that spirit not just the father seated on the throne the Lord who delivered the righteous the Lord who anoints is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the Lord is you will know that he is there by the miracles you know that he's there, not just because you ask him to come alone. You are here, working miracles. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you, you are he, releasing destiny, I worship you, I worship you. in a place not just because you believe by faith but there are tokens there are representations that attest to and validate the fact that he's in the midst of his people listen let me tell you my brothers and my sisters tonight you are in for an encounter you are in for an experience it's a shift in the spirit and i want you to believe we are immersed in an atmosphere of limited possibilities limitless possibilities do not allow the devil to lie to you that your case is so great that god cannot meet you that god cannot touch you let god be true and let every man be a liar hallelujah now but listen i learned this from pastor benny Hinn. i will share this briefly and then we'll begin to pray haven't worked in the healing ministry for more than half of a century benny Hinn shared that one of the challenges he had observed with people when the power of god begins to move is they are not ready to release the pain the sickness the infirmity you will think just because you are in god's presence and you expect him to touch you to heal you he will not take something from you that you are still holding back this mystery was demonstrated in the woman with the alabaster box when she came to jesus the bible says it was made of spiky nard pure nard a year's wages she broke it at his feet and it became an instrument of worship there are people who come with medical reports they come with pain they are just coming to inform god that this is what they are going through they are not ready for the exchange yet listen this is a very simple but powerful spiritual key 
When you come to God, the Bible says the instruction is to believe that He exists. Number two, that He is the rewarder of them who diligently seek Him. How does He reward? There must always be an exchange. Your weakness for His strength. The miracle, the testimony. Are we together now? So you must be able to hand over everything. Here's how the Bible puts it. All my cares and burdens unto you. I That's a part of the song that is powerful. Lord, I come to you with this array of family challenges. I'm handing it over to you. I don't expect to go empty. There are many people, whether God touches you or not, you will go back full because you didn't give him anything. Until you transfer the burden, the sickness, the Bible says, cast all your cares. It didn't say God will do it. It is your responsibility to say, Lord, I'm tired of carrying this infirmity. I'm tired of carrying this evil report. I bring it before you and I cast it down. When you are now empty, God says, I now exchange that which you have brought for what I have brought. Nobody comes before God empty. And God does not come before any man empty. The problem is there must be willingness for the exchange. God will not rest upon you when your hands are full, when your mind is full. Listen, it is very important. You are a man of God here. If all you come to give God is frustration of ministry, Lord, the church is not growing. Lord, this and that, that's, that, mm -mm, that's not the issue. Lord, I hand over everything. Call me Nana Kane. time to carry your bills that is killing you and surrender it before him it, listen it's time to take the sickness it's time to take the, all the concerns don't take some and leave some carry everything ah. i cast my crown before the high When your hands are too heavy, you cannot receive anything. You will need to take away, bring the report from your office. Bring the report from a doctor. Bring everything. When you lay it at his feet, you now lift your hand ready to receive the healing, the miracle. You don't come before God just to inform him. No. God is not interested in just being aware. He's interested in doing something. Cast your care. Listen. Coming to God and releasing everything is proof of faith. That you come before him and say, Lord, 
if you do not help me i don't know where the house rent is coming from we are 11 in this family and it's clear that there is a yoke upon this family you may think listen you may think because you are always appearing before him it means you are casting your care no you have to intentionally consciously say lord i don't want this sickness again take it i'm tired of this life of poverty and failure i'm tired of this life without results are we together now yes and one of the ways that we cast our care is through worship another way that we cast our care is through prayer very powerful you can pray and say lord take everything take everything tired of the burden of ministry tired of the burden of my family this is not how you designed me to work take it and then when you are now empty remember when there was no more vessel the oil stopped are we together tonight it does not take god anything to lift you it does not take god anything to bless you it does not take god anything to cause men to bless and honor and lift you listen Benny Hinn said that many people come to his healing crusades and they are ever conscious of their sicknesses, conscious of their infirmity, and even when the power of God is flowing, the fortitude for reception is not there because they are busy meditating. The size of this problem, can God solve it? And God is wondering and saying, who told you, who, who educated you about me? Who told you about me? The Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Tonight God is able to transform. Tonight God is able to heal. Hallelujah. To transform and to heal. Apostle, you don't understand the gravity of my situation. That's why. It's your mind and your perception that is being enlarged by the power of darkness. When God comes, the Bible says the mountains skip. Skip. And he clears the way for you. Is someone ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. I'll give us two prayer points before I begin to minister. And I want us to please pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. The first prayer is you are going to ask the Lord. Listen carefully. You are going to ask the Lord to do something to your faith tonight. I agree and I concur that sometimes the prevailing challenges can be so great and so mighty. You will sit down and begin to wonder in our finite minds, how will God navigate this and bring and birth this miracle for me? Are we together now? This is where the spirit of faith comes. The faith of God. It says, this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. You're going to pray, Lord, my faith is strong. I believe you. I believe you. Lift your voice and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Tonight, my faith is strong. I believe that this is the night. The night when you transform the night when you heal the night when you deliver the night when you turn my family around is someone pray this is the night of your power the night of your glory this beginning of miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples and manifested his glory manifest your glory O God father help my own belief I reject unbelief they limited God in the wilderness by saying can God make a way can God make a way
You are a ministry, pray. Tonight is a night when you expand, when you receive. You are in business, pray. Career, pray. You are in ministry, pray. For your family, pray. Release your faith. Hallelujah. Listen. Prayer point number two. The Bible says, Ye have not because ye ask not. You have not because you ask not. He said, ask and you will receive that your joy may be complete. Ask and you will receive. He didn't say give us any day. Give us this day. Our daily prayer. Listen, when you come to God, it is not only important that you are aware of who he is. But you must come to God stating specifically the way and the manner that you desire or the area that you trust him to step in and come through for you for every time jesus would meet with a blind man a lame man he would ask them what do you want that you are lame does not mean you want to stand you must be able to verbalize your requests you must be able to communicate. Listen, I know that many of you have written your prayer request, but I want to give you the next two or three minutes alone with God. Open your mouth and state the things that you desire by faith to happen to you tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Someone is talking to the Lord. Communicate your expectation. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that breathe. Our mouths were filled with laughter and said, They among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. It says, The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then it says, Turn again our captivity like the streams of the south. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith in your heart. Palabaruta shala bragada balaramo. Kranta lato shala gradira da baladaba. Someone is praying. Lord, my ministry is about to catch fire. There is a dimension of grace that must land upon my life. There is an operation of the Spirit that must rest upon me. Is someone praying? I will never be the same. I've touched your grace. My life is changed. I will
listen please look up it is not very difficult for a man's situation to change god is not a magician you will need to release your faith with understanding you are before the god of all flesh the doer the walker of wonders he's truly a miracle worker please believe in miracles believe in miracles they are not a fabrication of human intelligence no no god can work miracles god does miracles god delivers god heals god lifts god transforms god sets free that's what his grace can do Never be the same I've touched your grace My life must change I will never stay the same I've touched your grace My life is changed I will never preach the same I've touched your grace My life is changed I will never see the same I've touched your grace My life is changed Hallelujah Hallelujah In the atmosphere of God's glory Listen, don't wait until you are called by prophecy. Don't wait until you are prophesied upon. Let your heart be open to receive. Let your heart be opened to rise in the spirit. I want to pray now. Please listen. Listen to me. The power of God is very strong here. Let's work together now, guys. deliverance when kept within the boundaries of the word of god is powerful listen because for many of us let me tell you this i submit to you listen please don't inconvenience the guests the space is all right just just let them be please listen it's an interesting thing that many believers are unwilling to accept that behind many tragedies are spirits please understand this behind many operations listen when jesus was going to calm the storm every storm is made of two things wind and water you can see the water but you cannot see the wind every storm is made of wind and water there is no storm that is made of water alone jesus rebuked the water he rebuked the wind and the water was still there is no problem that is as a physical problem there are spirits back of it whether it is financial marital spiritual one of the biggest deceptions of darkness is to believe that your issue is just sociological or just marital no sir no sir there are spirits more spirits than men on the earth in one man there was a legion in one man that's to tell you how much scarce bodies are on earth for these spirits six thousand spirits in one man please listen to what i tell you your financial situation can be masquerading itself and dribbling you all around and it, yes there are principles here and there but hear me you are not free until the spirit that sponsor the operation is dealt with are we together there are you can only judge situations by what has affected you the one that has not affected you yet is there but just because it has not happened yet you may not know so the secret is to address the spirits behind it and not wait for them to create different scenarios that show you they are there are 
Are we together? When we pray and minister to people, listen, we're, we're, a, very, we're a very balanced, Bible-based ministry. And let me tell you this by the Spirit of God. You do not help men when you leave the spirits that is back of their situations to go back with them. Now, I know that here and there people abuse these things and do all kinds of nonsense that are not within the jurisdiction of Scripture. This is not what we're talking about. We're talking of liberty that is provable. That you can walk out before the service is done. You are seeing the evidence that this is what has masqueraded itself. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must change. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life must change. You can be a man of God here, greatly ministry, you are anointed, but things may not be working. And you may just think the issue is just ministry, ethics, preaching well, that is wonderful. But let me tell you, he said, I desire once and again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. It is not only angels that are on assignment, there are spirits on assignment. There are demons on assignment. There are powers that are on assignment. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 What seest thou? Four horns These are the horns that have lifted up themselves Against Judah, against Jerusalem And against Israel That these horns have made it That no man doth lift his head He said but I have sent Four carpenters It's a reality Behind many families are spirits. Behind many medical reports are spirits. Behind many repeated patterns of frustration are spirits. Oh, my help has come. shared the testimony of a gentleman many years ago he was in ministry and um, I had the opportunity to counsel him and while I was talking with him as he entered my room I saw a spirit just entering with him and I looked at this dear gentleman lovely adorable wonderful person and I was politely going to hint him to say sir the Lord is already showing me what is behind your problem. And ah, the gentleman just shot me down and said, no, no, no. Don't talk to me about this and that. I said, that's all right. No problem. I respect you. I do this. Let me just pray with you. That's all I requested from him. The last thing he could remember was me beginning to pray. And then when he recovered from himself, like almost an hour later on, he got up. And for the next three days, this gentleman kept reaching me. And said, Apostle, you have rattled my theology. What is this? Doors began to open like a charm in that gentleman's life. Listen, I hope you know that there was a relationship between the doors that were closed and the chains in the hand of Paul and Silas. It's very strange. They were bound hand and feet, the Bible says, at midnight. They lifted up their voices, they prayed and they sang. Suddenly, there was an earthquake because God Himself came. And then, listen, the Bible says the moment there was that earthquake, the chains by themselves fell. Immediately, the chains fell. He said, All doors open, not some. All doors. There was no use of key, the key was that chain. As the chain fell, the doors opened. Please, I'd like you to pray in one minute. Father, if there is any spirit entity that is back of my situation, it must live by the spirit and the grace of God. Lift your voice and pray.
e la baruta shala karapa kato zebradiya prantela subra haska barutia e kredusi ala haska baruta si alabas shali barato salabarusi by the power of the Holy Ghost tonight in the name of Jesus every spirit that is not of the Christ that is back of the situation around my life my family my business my ministry pray hallelujah you see the power of God is already touching people listen I'm going to take a few minutes tonight to really address this issue of spirits because they are real they are very very real very real hallelujah I have met so many spirits in my life I've had so many encounters that's not the basis of believing they are there scripture already tells us they are there but let me tell you they are there and they are not there doing nothing they are there causing pain they are there manipulating families they are there projecting things that are not of the christ but the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty let's pray i want to begin to pray now please listen whether or not you are an usher i'd like you to help those under the anointing we're going to do a lot of praying this night while i'm ministering um please participate in the prayer prayer is very powerful when done with understanding are we together now i want to pray for you and then begin to minister to people because there are real spirits behind people's situations hallelujah first i want you to bring out now i'm not going to say anything god is giving me an instruction the power of god i'm already seeing something like a blue smoke rising out of people and these are spirits and when that happens the power of god will come upon them i want you whether outside or inside just begin to bring them out here we're going to pray and call on that name now but the lord is revealing to me you will be very surprised some of you are standing for yourself standing for your family please bring them out this is the instruction god is giving except god is not god there is no spirit that is back of any one situation that will remain after tonight please quickly just bring them out i'm seeing the power of god i don't know why god is giving me this instruction Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I will contend with them that contend with you. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Please bring them out. Let's just walk with what the Holy Ghost is doing. The strangers that must come out of their hiding place and let you be and let your family be. There's fire burning in this place. One more minute and then we'll pray. God is still locating people inside and outside. It's time for your liberty and your liberty in full, in full by the Spirit. Establishing the victory of the Christ over every life, every destiny. Let's 
Let me pray now. I'm seeing fire. That fire is coming on people as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, as you shout that name, Jesus, I declare by the blood of the eternal covenant that every legal access upon which the devil is laying claim over lives, over bodies, over finances, over destinies, I invoke help that woman by the blood of the eternal covenant. It must go now at the count of three shouts. Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. I cause darkness by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I command the powers that be by the blood of the eternal covenant that everything that binds men to spirits binds men Realities in the spirit. I come against it by the God of Jeshurun. Hey, Lakatosia, please bring them out. Shaparakata, Lakata Parutasia. We release a sound in the realm of the spirit. We declare sounds of victory. We still pray, my God. Chains. I'm seeing chains in the spirit. One more time, you are going to shout that name. Lord, if there is anyone here under any kind of chain, the Bible says to release them that are bound. As you shout that name, no matter how long that chain has stayed, it's time for you to be released. Are you ready now? Thank you, Father, for the honor of your word. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I break those chains now. Separaka to badash, embrekete katabarakusia. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the vision of a graveyard. I'm seeing the vision of a graveyard. And the Lord wants me to rebuke the spirit of the grave. The spirit of Hades. I stand by the God of heaven. And I declare right now. Anyone covenanted to the power of the grave. The covenant with death. The covenant with the grave. By fire. May that fire fall on you now. Now, the covenant with the grave, the covenant with death, I speak by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now, be liberated now, be free now. Haladuja <laughs> lihas kabaruda shalabanda sibaha. Rakadiza nehesala kutu. Bratuz kale maruda shaletia. Hallelujah. Now listen. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm sensing a unique grace for the healing of growths and lungs. Growths and lungs. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like a woman on a surgical table. This is what I'm seeing. I'm speaking right now. Every spirit behind the infirmity. My God, I'm seeing fire fall on people. Right now in the name of Jesus. Every lump, every growth fibroids. Malignant growth, cancerous tissues by the Spirit of the Living God. Let the life and the power of God touch you now. Let the life, help them please. Let the life and the power of God, in the name of Jesus, I command those growths to leave those bodies now. I command them to dissolve now. Help that lady please. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Grow. 
growths. I'm still seeing growths coming out of people's bodies. Swellings of all kinds. This is not limited to women alone. Including men. Be free now in the name of Jesus. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in And we will never settle for less. We know there's more Everyone here in front in this overflow and all the overflows I declare that the spirits that lay claim upon any aspect of your life I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I command them to leave now pack your load and go at the count of three one two three go 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 out of their destinies now out of their lives forever out of their lives forever out of their homes forever Forever. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. We are still praying. Now, the Lord is showing me something that I don't see very often. I'm seeing an old gate and I'm seeing chains on it with a padlock. This is a sign of stagnation. You are here and mysteriously, you have been in the same position. You try to move. You try to push. I'm about to smash that gate to pieces. Not to open it, to stamp it down. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Now, help them please. Listen. I want you to shout Jesus from the depth of your heart. I decree and declare every destiny here that has been tied down by men, by systems, by spirits, so that you cannot move. By this shout of Tequila tonight, I declare every gate crushed and comes down now. Are you ready? At the count of three. One, two, three. I prophesy to you, move forward. Go forward. Go forward. Stagnation comes to an end. Ritro apakoto shala rekete kete kete parus kaba embreketo sheleto sabata. Stagnation comes to an end. Retrogression comes to an end. Hallelujah. Who is Bukola? I'm hearing the name Bukola. Bukola. Our time is gone. There is still a lot to do. Who is Bukola? Don't worry. Don't force and rush those who are standing in front. You are Bukola. Where are you coming from? Let me pray for you, my dear. Stand up and I'll pray for you. You are also Bukola. My dear, hold my hands. This is my... In the name of Jesus, this shade that I'm seeing, be loose now. In the name of Jesus, I lose you from that chain. It is broken now and broken forever. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me someone, you walk in first bank. You walk in first bank. Who is that person? You need a serious miracle now. You walk in first bank. First bank. Let's hurry up, please. You walk. Who is that first bank? All of you are Bukola. Ma, let me speak to you. The grace for wealth. Stand up. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing currencies falling on you. And the Lord is telling me that there is a strange grace for wealth. 
this, this, is, this should be Kingsley's wife. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the Spirit of the Lord, let that word come to pass now. I release you by the power of prophecy into that dimension. Prepared blessings by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'll pray for everyone, but the power of God is going to come on one of you now. Very mighty anointing is coming on one of you, and God is setting that person's family free. One of these Bukolas, right? So the power of God is coming on you, one of you. It, this is not something small. It's a, a mighty outpouring of the power of God. When that happens, um, I will just identify that one. Who works in First Bank? First Bank, you are a staff. Huh? No, you are not a staff of first bank, you are on contract. Is that true? You are on contract. I will still pray. This person I'm seeing is a bona fide staff of the bank. I want to pray for you because I'm seeing something that can cost you your job. Father, show this, my dear brother, mercy by the grace of God. Look at me, sir. I'm seeing a whirlwind on your head. I need to pray against confusion and pray against stagnation. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are set free now and you are free forever. In the name of Jesus. Please make sure you are observing the ladies. The power of God is going to come on one. That's the instruction God is giving me. It's very mighty anointing. When it comes on that one, I want to pray for them. Your father is a general in the army. Who is that? Your dad is a general in the army. I need to pray. We need to rebuke conspiracies. The Lord is showing me your father is a general in the army. Real army, military. Please, if you are that person, I want you to come. If you are that person, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. This is conspiracy. In the name of Jesus, over her family, let there be a mighty deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for all of you for the various reasons why you have come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord himself give you testimonies. Very strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. The Lord is showing me a vision. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. There's no marriage. One, two, three, four, five. Five ladies. Nobody has settled down. Where are you? Please come. Where are you coming from, my dear? From Joss. I want to pray. You are five of you. All alive. Five ladies. No one has settled down. What do you do? Wait. Sterling Bank. You will leave the bank soon. Listen to me. There is another job that is coming for you. When that job comes, don't fight it. It's the will of God. You hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying you should go and retire now. But I'm telling you that another job is coming. Let's pray. It's not normal. We need to break this. I'm seeing three ladies in my vision. I don't know why there's only one person here. These five, five families. Please make sure you don't tell lies. Don't just come and stand here. If it's not, I will pray for everybody. Five families. None. Not one person has settled down. Ladies now. Don't cry, my dear. Jesus is in this place. Release the family now. Release the family now. I'm looking at this lady and I'm seeing coals of fire and I'm seeing a horn on it. Release the family now. There is someone here. This is a very mysterious thing that happens to you. In a very strange way. This happens especially when you pray for extended periods. Your whole body starts itching you in a funny way. You know how someone under the influence of a, what they call that drug? Chloroquine. That's what happens to you. Like physically you begin to scratch your body. I must pray for you. Why is she here? Please. You are the one? Come. Madam, you too. Where are you coming from, ma? You are coming from Abuja. Come. We will attend to the photos you are holding here, eh? but for now, we need to pray for you. This is, this is not just evil, very evil. I have to pray for you. 
You too, my brother. Where are you coming from? You see, my dear people, I'm, no, I'm not saying if your body is itch, listen to the, the, the issue. I just saw fire, this row, right down, just like a sword of fire just passed. I don't know who that is for, but in the name of Jesus, let it bring emancipation right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Look at me, my dear. You believe in Jesus? I bring you life from this kingdom that we represent. Be free now from this demonic, satanic oppression. In the name of Jesus. Uh, dear auntie, let me pray for you. Just keep her there. Can you hold my hands, madam? I want to pray for you right now in the name that is above all names. Help her. Be free right now. I cause the workings of darkness over your body and over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Five families, hold my hands. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, let it be over. Let the doors be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you, my dear. I'm looking at you physically, but in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing an arrow inside your head. I need to pray. There is infirmity that has been projected in your body. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Can I pray for you? Is that alright? Father, help this lady. In the name of Jesus, hold my hands. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be free from this that does not name the name of Christ. I set you free from it now in the name of Jesus. Five ladies, I'll just lay my hands on you. Be free right now. Let the doors be opened. Be free right now. Kai, let her go. Out now in the name of Jesus. She's also here. Your dad is a general in the army. Where are you from? Gombe State. You are in Abuja, but you are from Gombe State. I'd like us to pray. Can I pray for you? I'm not a prophet of doom, eh? Don't be afraid. Look at me. Those who plan evil, in the name of Jesus, they will not live to execute their wickedness. You see, Ba, my brothers and my sisters, let me teach you something about life. The Bible says a man's enemy shall be the members of his own household. Father, preserve the life of this our general in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a family now, God is breaking the plague of death. The power of God is coming. I don't know whether they are inside or outside. The plague of death is being broken right now. There is a mighty anointing that is coming on that wise to set them free from the plague of death. Please come very quickly. I'll just touch you. I don't know why they are here, but we have to hurry up very quickly. Just a touch. Believe by faith. It is over. Out of her now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sir, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Abuja. From Abuja? Yeah. What do you do, sir? I'm a minister. You are a minister of the gospel. I want to pray for you. Where, where, where are you coming from? Where do you come your state of origin? Afraid. Do you plan to go this Christmas? I'm not a, but I'm not. Huh? I'm, I, I went for operation. It's not a... Listen, that's why I want to talk to you. I'm looking at this man and I'm seeing... You were supposed to have died. It's because of the intercession of men that you are alive. But then, I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom. We, anything God shows, we cancel. You get the point now? I'm seeing this man going in a bus. And I'm seeing a truck. I will not mention, I'm not being antagonistic. But the truck did not just shift your car. It climbed it. And everybody gone like that. You see, when God shows a thing, it is because of the strength he has put in his church. The power to change it completely. Are we together? I want to pray for you. You are very sick. And even the surgery has not solved the problem. Because what I'm seeing is still there. Please hold my hand, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son, 
let this man not be given to the sword let him not be given to the grave in the name of jesus i knock on the door of life and i speak to you sir by the power of the holy ghost be set free i fortify you by the power of god's word and i declare death will be far from your dwelling i speak that your going out is blessed and safe even your coming in is blessed and it is safe in the name of jesus may the lord show you mercy continually in jesus name i pray family of five i need to pray hold my hands Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say In the name of Jesus, I lose you and your siblings. Everything that is an orchestration of darkness, I speak by the Spirit of the living God. You are loosed now. In the name of Jesus, I declare liberty. I restore dignity and honor. What is happening to you? I'm seeing an angel of the Lord going down here. There's somebody. The same thing is happening to someone there. The same thing God is doing here, God is doing to a lady there. I declare be liberated right now in the name of Jesus. Please come, sir. Let me just touch you by faith. In Jesus' name, be set free. Come. In Jesus' name, be set free. 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 There is someone, I think you are in ministry, you are in overflow one. The power of God is going to come upon you in a mighty way now. Please carry the person and bring the person here. We have to hurry up. I'm seeing the power of God touch the person. Hallelujah. I'm about to release that grace for speed again. Please come. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. Shala superuskiata. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing blood dripping around the east. And the Lord is saying, those who are easterners. Is, this, is a, this is a sign and a wonder. When God shows me a map, whenever I mention that location, anyone who is oppressed within that location, the power of God comes on them. Right now, I'm seeing the east. The east. I release that power now. The Lord is bringing liberation. Eastern states. I'm seeing blood drip upon them. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing an elderly woman with sharp pain around her lumbar vertebra. The power of God is touching that woman right now. Who is the person? Mommy, you're welcome. One to pray. Ah. Not everything that looks like sickness is sickness. There are many things that are projections of darkness. Are we together? Mommy, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ of God. Help her please. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, release our mother. In the name of Jesus. Mommy, I command that infirmity, that plague and that yoke of darkness. Be gone right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me just pray for these two people now. This lady, where is she coming from? Okay. 
there is it will surprise you how the grace for intercession will come on you this lady this fair lady i'm talking to you in the name of jesus i speak by the power of the holy ghost may that grace mantle you and turn you into a sign and a wonder the lord will show you things in your dreams he will show you things in visions please bring our mommy for me let me pray in the name of jesus christ um just touch her back for me in the name of jesus christ i declare right now this is not sickness this is the spirit of death i command the spirit of death hell and the grave to leave our mother right now by the power of the holy spirit complete emancipation complete emancipation in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ the lord is asking me to stretch my hands just here i don't know why but this is what he's saying just right here to the wall i'm seeing i'm seeing people's stomach the abdominal region i'm seeing things like chains just bring those under the anointing as i'm talking i'm seeing things like chains these are devils of infirmity the lord is asking me to just stretch my hand please just allow me do my madness with god here and let the lord set these people free please bring them out we're hurrying up now in the name of jesus I place my hand on my stomach as a point of contact. Every planting that is not of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, be free from it now. Hallelujah. The power of God is coming on one of the ushering ladies. One of these ladies with the jerseys. I'm seeing an anointing. I know you are ministering, but this is a miracle God is bringing for you, for your family. One of the ushering ladies. I don't know whether they are inside, outside. I'm seeing an anointing on one of the ushering ladies. This is, this is liberty that God is bringing right now. Shalus Karita Hasubadia. In the name of Jesus, my dear, look at me. Shame and reproach is living your life now. Shame and reproach is living your life now. The garment of shame and reproach is living your life now. Why is this gentleman here? You are not the anointing outside? Come. Hold my hands in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Come, you li lifting your hands. Run, come. Your time of change has come. Where are you coming from? It's, it's all right. It's okay. Don't worry. That's why you are here. Do you know me? That's why I'm saying you just relax. You were in the crowd and God brought you here. Do you know why God brought you here? Because things are not working at all in your family. God needs to turn things around. If I don't pray for you, what I'm seeing is you are celebrating Christmas morning and blaming people, being the reason why somebody died and another person died because I'm seeing the spirit of death hovering around your family. But the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. Let me pray for you. Hold my hands, my dear. What did you study? Do you have a job? I'm, I'm a copper in Ondo State. I work, I'm, I'm a copper. I'm starting an NGO mm. for HIV in Ondo State. I want to pray for you. The favor of God that will come upon you from this miracle service will surprise you. You believe that? In the name of Jesus, I stay the power of evil over your family. And in the name of Jesus, I release you to a realm and a dimension of strange favor. Receive that grace in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but I want to release this grace for speed. Please, I want you to believe there is a real grace for speed. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Period. There is a grace. Kashina, Kamuna, 
Let's pray. Listen. It's a mystery how God brought me into this understanding. When you understand how speed works, you will never feel bad for any delay in your life. It's a strange system that insists that you catch pace with destiny. It works mysteriously. It works by compressing time. 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 Dominion over time is what speed is about. I want to pray for someone now. Sirkin Sarakuna. Father, please. I know that when I begin to pray inside and outside, people will begin to run physically. Honestly, why God does it, I don't know. I think it's just a prophetic acting of what is happening in the realm of the spirit. But every time I pray this prayer, the hand of God comes upon people and you find out that sometimes they begin to run physically. And I'm going to pray that prayer now. There are people here, God wants to take 10 years and put in one year. God wants to take one year five years and put in one month is it not written in your bible that i will restore the years god does not only restore things he restores time whoever can restore time must be god himself are we together in the name of jesus i decree and declare right now Everyone under the sound of my voice, inside, outside, parushalata. I declare at the count of three, Father, let this grace for speed, restoration, the mystery that gains time. May that grace fall upon people within this auditorium, overflow one, two, three, four online. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. One, two, three, take that grace now. Restoration, I prophesy, pursue, overtake, without fail, recover, pursue, overtake, without fail, recover, in career, pursue, in marriage, pursue, in ministry, pursue, I'm speaking by the Spirit, pursue, overtake, recover, pursue, help that woman please, overtake, recover, Financially, pursue, overtake, recover in your influence. Pursue, overtake, recover in your academics. I pray for students. Pursue, overtake, recover. Pursue, overtake, recover. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The person who will run out now under the anointing, don't stop the person, just hold the person. By the person's self, mysteriously by the Spirit, there is a prophetic word. And this is how God told me. It's a force that will come upon the person. Please help her. It will happen by the Spirit. They will come out by themselves. A strong anointing is not something you can resist. This is a sign and a wonder. How God does it, I don't know.
That's why I'm standing. Three more people. It's a wind. It's a force of the spirit. Kai, the wonder walking power of Jesus. How the church has limited him. Limited him. Limited him. Please help them. Make sure they don't injure themselves. Gashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Yana, Gashina, Gashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana. ones that have come out by the spirit i'm declaring right now the chains that hold your feet i'm seeing their legs specifically their legs with chains i lose you now in the name of jesus i release you to destiny i release you to destiny i release you to destiny by the power of the holy ghost no more delay no more retrogression by the spirit of the living god The force of God's power birthing possibilities in the lives of people. The power of God is coming on this gentleman, this one wearing polo. Yes, my friend, the anointing of the Spirit is coming on you in a very mighty way. And I'm seeing a gate open before you, and night is at your back and day is in your front i prophesy to you what i'm seeing and to everyone who connects with this prophecy i take night behind you and i command your morning to stand before you i take night behind you and i command the sun to shine before you in the name of jesus christ Everyone lift your voice after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit. I am breaking limits. I am moving forward. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. Breaking limits. In the name of Jesus, I make progress. Is someone praying? I make progress by the power of the Holy Ghost. Breaking limits. Breaking limits. Pali shala hasaka tabra galusia. Ekretus kaba shala dabaruti. Embrekoto shone brahasa dabala daba. Hallelujah. We're about to pray for the sick now. Please listen. When we take our time to pray for the sick like this, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on someone just around the ministers. As I came here, I just spoke, I just saw fire, just resting. Strong anointing from the front to my back. Strong anointing. The Spirit of God is resting upon people, moving, shifting by the Spirit of the living God. How forcible. Pastor, there is a grace coming on you. The HICC pastor, a strong anointing, shifting you by the Spirit. Step into a new dimension. Kashina, Kamuna, Sir King Aljana, Na Na Na.
dimensions. We want to pray for the sick now. Listen very carefully. I believe in miracles. There are people here who are standing, trusting God to touch various aspects of their lives, their bodies. Sky. There is still a strong anointing around the minister section here. I'm seeing impartations, real graces, impartations coming by the Spirit. Impartations. People are drinking of wines. Ima, lift your hands. I amplify the prophetic upon your life in the name of Jesus. I amplify the prophetic in the name of Jesus. Hold your hands, two of you. Please help them. Take that place in the name of Jesus. Amplify the grace. You step into new dimensions in the spirit. The spirit and the power of the word. Your words from today will be like fire. Fire. Refine us fire. Sarukin Sarapuna Yana Yana Sarukin Sarapuna Dan, come. Hold my hands. Grace is given for you to rise. No more delay. I place a ladder before you and I shift you by the Spirit to the amazement of many. May your life change, change like day and night. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Please rise. Let's stretch our hands here. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Prophecy, no matter how accurate, is limited by time and the openness of the vessel. But that every time, this is not a ritual, it's a revelation to come before the God who can answer. Listen, there are things here written that are death sentences. There are things written here that will take only God to provide a miracle for. There are things written here that are age-long captivities. Some of them even predate our coming to the earth. But there is a name that is above every other name. The Bible says, Wherefore God hath so highly exalted him and given him an office, a name, a title. The Bible says that at the mention of that name, everything in the earth in heaven under the earth will bow every knee and then every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord even to the glory of the Father I cannot begin to tell you the kind of tearsome testimonies that have come out of this this is not a ritual there is a covenant that sponsors the, uh, the answered prayer here and one more time and the last time really for this year I want us to agree in the next two, three minutes. Wherever you are, just stretch your hands as a point of contact and begin to pray that the Egyptian that I see today, in the name of Jesus the Christ of God, I will see them no more forever. Is someone praying? Shalakura Sibahaskadaba. Every evil report, orchestrations of darkness, if it had a beginning tonight is the end pray don't worry for those of you at the overflow who are still being ministered to just focus as the ministers minister to you while we pray
decree and declare that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. Father, we bring before you every situation here. Marital situations, financial situations, spiritual situations, career situations. In the name of Jesus, we bring them under the covering of the blood. Every legal access upon which these requests continue to remain. By the blood of the eternal covenant, we nullify that access now in Jesus' name. Father, by this prayer, we blot out handwritings and ordinances that speak against God's people. We declare them nullified forever. I stand as one sent by the Spirit of the Lord, and I declare, receive strange testimonies. Before this year runs out, in the name of Jesus, let every request tabled here be turned into testimonies. Testimonies are largely answered through men. When it leaves heaven, most times the testimonies we need we need them in their material form. There are few testimonies that we need them just in the spirit form. I'm praying every human agent that must partner with God, partner with the systems of God to see to it that this request is granted. We compel them by the spirit to do so now. In the name of Jesus. Every death sentence written here, in the name of Jesus, we cancel it now. Yes. Hallelujah. Let it be done. So shall it be. We establish it in the name of Jesus. Now, we want to round up by prophesying over our lives. This for me, you've heard me say this is the best part of the service. Because this is where everybody gets an opportunity for spiritual realities to be created in your life. Please, I want you to agree with me. Every proclamation that will come, receive it by faith. Believe it and shout a loud amen as proof that you believe it. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ. Delay comes to an end now. Delay comes to an end now. Delay comes to an end now. Everything representing shame and reproach in your life and that of your family. It comes to end this night in the name of Jesus. Pray for your spiritual life. The kind of encounter that you have not had from January till now. Strange encounters, revelations of heaven. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then before you and the next dimension I decree and declare by the spirit of grace that was upon the nation of Israel standing before Jericho I command every world go down flat go down flat financial walls go down flat career walls go down flat in the name of Jesus And the 
king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Every man that must send for you to come out from where you are to where you need to go to, the gatekeepers of the dimensions that you seek to enter, I compel favor from them to you. I compel favor from them to you. In the name of Jesus. There are angels that herald the influence of a man. Listen, honor is a grace. When that grace is not upon you, no matter how noble you are, you will never be honored. Honor is a grace. And when that grace is on you, only God can take it away. It says, and Jabez was more honorable than his, not more prosperous. Not more favored, more honorable. Many people do not know what honor is. The fortitude for preference. There is an unction from God that fishes you out of the crowd, places you in a position where the eyes of men must discern you, reward you, recognize that which God has invested within you. Listen to me. There are many gifted people. The eye that can bless has not seen you. There are many men of God. The eyes that can discern and lift you is not there. Let me pray for you. There is a grace for honor. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may the mantle that makes for honor, territorial honor, honor at a national level, in the name of Jesus, receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. You will be surprised to see the workings of this grace in your life. When the grace for honor and favor is upon you, you will always be found in the midst of your destiny helpers. Listen, it's a mystery that cannot be explained. You will be suspended until they appear. Then you come. Listen. Is a waste to fight battles without reward. David said, What shall be given to the man that will do this to Goliath? Sometimes it's a waste to do noble things in the face and the presence of people who have no fortitude to discern and to reward. I pray for you. May the Lord position your destiny help us and cause them to love you and to honor you. The Lord asked me to wear this as a prophetic representation of what He is still doing. It is still a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. I stand by the God of heaven. Have the faith to believe. Don't sit down questioning. Leave your mind and trust God. It is within His power to make great. He takes a man from the dunghill overnight and turns his life around. I'm praying for you. For some of you, before this year is over, step into a dimension of prepared blessings. Prepared blessings. Prepared parushalata. I release you into a dimension of prepared blessing. Listen, believers, I want you to believe this. Our time is gone, but I want you to believe this. Do not doubt what the power of God can do. Hallelujah. We're rounding up in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. The grace that will produce results of wonders in your life. May that grace rest upon you now. Prepared.
hear blessings that take you to realms. Ten years put in one month, I release that grace upon you. Listen, these graces are not some carnal show of wealth. No, they are time redemption systems. Understand what they are. They seek to conquer time and give you the convenience and the allowance to serve the purposes of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, the grace for ease that brings you into supernatural results. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I pray for every family represented here. The sound of mourning, the sound of pain and anguish by the Spirit of the living God, let it come to an end this night. Everything that has refused to work in your life by the power of the highest, I compel it to begin to work now. you do not know may they carry glad tidings about you to the ears of your helpers in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the presence of God the weightiness the substance of his presence that must rest upon you especially if you are in ministry by the power of the Holy Ghost be a career of divine presence In the name of Jesus, everyone here trusting God for a job, before this year runs out, may God give you a miracle job. Every family here trusting the Lord for any and every kind of breakthrough, we call upon the God of the heavens. In the name of Jesus, let there be an, a, an abundant supply of that grace. Hear me, whoever ignores you will pay for it. Hear me, any man that fights you goes down instantly. Let me say it again. Any man that fights you goes down instantly. I pray for every ministry here under the sound of my voice the grace and the wings of the spirit that will take you to dimensions untold may that grace rest upon you I pray for every man and every woman of God here the errands and the horse that will hold your hands loyal men indeed may God give them to you here who the testimony over your life is ichabod I declare by the spirit of God a restoration happens now <laughs> thou shall not be afraid of the snare of the fowler nor the noisome pestilence nor the destruction that wasted in noonday says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side it says none shall hurt you but with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked i pray for you as a bird is escaped from the snare of the fowler may you escape from every evil may you escape from every trap in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak over your life. Go from glory to glory. The remaining weeks of this year, I'm speaking to you. May they be weeks of strange wonders. And finally, let me speak over your prayer life. Over your word study life. Whatever has stolen your joy. Whatever has stolen your fire. Whatever has stolen your passion. Whatever has stolen your focus. In the name of Jesus by fire. Let it be restored tonight. May the gifts of the Holy Ghost operate freely in your life. May you be a wonder first to yourself. And then may you be a wonder to everyone around you. In the name of Jesus. 
finally, anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death, to see to it that you will not finish this year well, to see to it that it will not be well with you and your family. Gehazi came and met the woman and said, it's all well. It's all well with your household. I pray for you. Because the Bible says, to say to the righteous, it shall be well. Therefore, I speak over you, it is well. I declare over you, all is well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. For all of you who have traveled from far, whether from another nation, right down here, from another city, right down here, you will go back with strange testimonies. You will carry a fire and anointing that will be worth your coming here. In the name of Jesus. Very quickly, you are here under the sound of my voice. Please, let's minimize movement. And you are saying, Apostle, I want you to give me an opportunity to give my life to Jesus Christ. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've seen the wonder-working power of God. I need Jesus as a matter of urgency in my life. Hear me. The Bible says, whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Praise the Lord. Whether you are here inside or outside, there are people here who are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. There are others who are saying, Apostle, I need restoration of my relationship with Jesus. It is never too late to reconnect with Him. Now, whether you are here, let's minimize movement, whether you are here inside or outside, we cannot close this meeting. This is the last miracle service for the year. Wherever you are, whether you are rededicating your life or you are handing your life over to Jesus for the first time, inside, outside, overflow, one, two, three, I want you to run and come and stand right in front of me here. Sustain the boldness to come. Don't be ashamed. Let's celebrate them as they come, Koinonia. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Keep coming. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. The Bible says, For God so loved you and me, He proved His love by giving, not taking giving his one and only begotten son now the firstborn of we the begotten that whosoever will believe in him should not perish it's a law but have the way the life of god you have come many of you making this decision for the first time many of you rededicating your lives to jesus listen it doesn't matter why you came i want you to know that there is a god who loves you desperately unashamedly and is ready to give you a new beginning lift your right hand and say this very passionately say this truthfully from the depth of your heart say lord jesus please if you're joining us quickly come quickly come find a space and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart say with me again lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe join them quickly say i believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you shed your blood for my sin tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight until forever I reign in life I am a child of God I belong to the family of God Amen 
keep your hands lifted while I pray for you Father thank you You have brought this once by your spirit You are able to save to the uttermost Scripture says Thank you for drawing this once I decree and declare By the spirit of God That every legal stand That the devil has against them Is nullified tonight by the blood I declare by the authority of scripture your sins be forgiven and I declare that the Lord grants you a new beginning from tonight. I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. The power to love and serve Jesus is released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now very quickly there are a number of you. Um, There are two gentlemen waving their hands. You can follow this aisle or this one whichever will take you to the same place. Please follow them as we celebrate them. There will be a group of people to just receive you and just share a few things. Hello beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain